What up, what up, guys? Yo, Fupan Sebi here, and we are back with some Tsukihime. And yes, this is it. We're in the final route, boys. We're gonna do Kohaku route. See, this is the Kohaku that we all see in Arc route, Shia route, and a little bit Hisue before the end, right? The sweet, energetic Genki girl, right? But there's a dark side. There's a dark side to this smiling maid. The maid that always smiles in the tonal residence. The maid that show us a smile. Is it real? Is it fake? We don't really know, right? She said everything was fake, but was it truly all an act? Did she really not really enjoy any of this? Well, you know, besides the mm, we dare not mention parts, but so. Um, but we all know that no matter what, Konhaku will always love her little sister Hisue. Right? I love this screenshot a lot, man. I did not take this screenshot, someone took it on Twitter, and I thought it was super cute, dude. So that's why I downloaded it. It's when Hisue is like, she's doing like a move in Melty Blood, but it looks like she's touching Konhaku's nose. Because these sisters, these sisters love each other, man. There's a certain bond that Akia will never knew. Even though she pretend Nissan is her Nissan, right? The main character Shiki's her Nissan. But there's a certain family bond that there's something these two have that no one else can ever have. Their bond is strong. And so we're gonna go in with uh, a little bit of a trailer on Kohaku. But before I also show you a little bit of a trailer too, uh, usually I show you the voice actors before, but I'm gonna do a little bit different even though it's kind of late. They showed a voice actor first, since I already showed it technically um, already with the Kohaku route. Not Kohaku route, the Hisui route, my bad. So Kohaku has Kuo Hara Yuki as a voice actress. And that's pretty godlike. The reason why it's pretty godlike is I'm gonna show you in a minute. Or I'm gonna show you now, actually. I don't know any of the visual novels that she was in. But this song's about to end. I already know it. But let's check out her anime role. So we go to my anime list. You're like, all right, all right, pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, Hime. Oh shit! What the hell? She was Hime. She was in, in Shuzoku Viewers. What the hell? Right. Kami some of those are you, you key fans out there. I know you. You got to be out there. You're here on the visual novel stream, so. Kim Soo no Yabai, she's a, oh shit, this is it. She's Toru, dude. She's Toru and Kobayashi Sanchi no Maid Dragon. She's the dragon girl. That's so cool, dude. And of course, this is the other roles too. Shonen Sample, Planetary, I didn't know that. R0, oh, just some side character. Say that Gosuku, that's the newest one this season, July 2021. And some other roles. But I know a majority of people probably know her for Toru and Kobayashi. So that's pretty cool. So Kohaku new VA is Kobayashi. And I think that fits a lot because Kobayashi is technically like a Yandere too, right? She's also a Genki maid. That's kind of a Yandere. So I thought that was really funny. So I was going to compare the faces, but honestly, the faces, they're still pretty much the same. I guess I can compare the faces one more time. Oh, no, never mind. You were sorry. All right, let's watch the trailer, though. You can hear it, Kobayashi. Uh -oh. oh my god, bro. Dude. Dang, dude. Wow, wow, we wow. Wow, wow, we wow. Wow, wow, we wow. Dude, she's cool. I like her a lot. So we're not gonna break it down. We're not here for that. I just want you to visualize. I want you to see what she looks like. I want you to hear what she sounds like. 
That way, when we play Kohaku Rao, you know. She's a young girl who brightens the tone of resonance with her smile. And there's a couple of stuff I like about Melissa Blood. I mean, come on, bro. We never seen her in this outfit. I wonder if we're going to see her in the outfit. Or that might be in a Tsukihime HD remake, maybe. Who knows? Now, she wore this in the other Melissa Blood, the old one. And then, look, she has to... You already know, bro. She make a lot. Look at her face. Look at her face. Zoom in. Those those eyes, they're dead. And then, bam, she went back to being the Genki girl. See, I like the subtle, the subtleness in the new Melty Blood. And the old Melty Blood, too. They were kind of like that, too. But the new Melty Blood, you can definitely see with that new HC, right? So you can see the Yandere on Kohaku. And she go back to being the Genki girl. And then this is her run. Whenever she runs, this is what she look like when she runs. Remember this run. She runs like that, like a cartoon. It's pretty cute. Hit you with the broom. Remember? Remember what Hisue said? Nessa is always sweeping in the yard because she can't do anything else but cook and sweep. And I guess medicines, right? And then I was kind of hoping to see the plant and Hisue route. But we didn't get to see any of the plan. So I think the cactus is here, Johnny. Right? And we didn't see this in uh, Hisui Route 2. So we might be seeing it either in Kohaku Route or probably in the sequel. Right? Kogetsu Toya or something like that. But you see, look at Kohaku eyes, bro. She's dropping out Molotov. I want, I want to see Kohaku fly on a broomstick. And drop out Molotovs. If we don't see that in the in in Kohaku, I'm gonna be very disappointed. And then bam, bro, underneath underneath the broom that she's always using, this is Samurai Blade. What the fuck? Nippon Steel folded ten thousand times, but she has a Samurai Blade underneath the broom. That's crazy. And then this is Johnny, I believe here, Johnny. But I don't think they'll probably call it that anymore in the new Tsukihime HD remake or probably in the new Melted Blood. Because honestly, that's for old people, bro. Right? These Zoomers, do they even watch old school movies? They should. Because all the movie sucks. All right, let's not go there, bro. <laughs> let's, not, let's not go down the old man path. So, yeah, I, I believe this plant is called Johnny. Here's Johnny. And yes, the cactus will punch the crap out of you. And then she drop out Molotov again. And then there's a cool, uh, what was it, Wrecking Ball or something? Shaquin, look at her fucking katana. See, I want to see that in the Tsukihime route. If Kohaku does not pull out the katana, I'm going to be really sad. I thought, see, this is why I believe in Hisui route. I said that Kohaku was the strongest in the Tono family. Because of this, right? Because I saw her playing in Melody Blood. I think she's stronger than Akia, dude. I think she's stronger than Hisui. Well, obviously, Hisui doesn't really fight. I think she's stronger than everybody except for Ayoko and Ark. Because look at this, bro. How, how did she hit that far with a samurai sword? A katana. Shaquin. And then, oh boy. When are we going to see her in the China dress, dude? Don't tell me this is a Melty Blood exclusive. If we don't see her in a China dress in the Tsukihime route, it better be in an HD remake. I'm trying to see. Well, I guess it's a 1080. But the visual novel, in my opinion, looks way better than the fighting game. Uh, no, nothing against you, French bread. But the visual novel is pumped in with fake Grand Order money, dude. So the visual novel is going to be like in 4K, 60 FPS. Fucking, I don't know. That shit's going to be lit. I'm trying to see Kohaku trying to dress in 4K. Yeah, let's go. Kohaku. So that's the Kohaku trailer. All right, now that you've seen it, now that you visualize it, and now you know her new voice actress is the Dragon Maid. Let's start the final route, Kohaku route. I honestly don't know what to expect. Hold on. We always have this issue. Okay. Yeah, I gotta get some water. Here 
hear that. Dude, this is it. The final push. We pretty much got all the endings already. We got arc ending. We got Shiel endings. I should say it. Arc ending, Tsukihime. Shiel ending, Daylight Blue. Akia ending, Warm Afternoon Nap. Hisuwe ending, Midday Moon. And now, once we finish, we unlock Kohaku. Kohaku is now separate from Hisuwe. She now has her own separate path. It is time. We learn from Hisuwe Rock. Kohaku was the true antagonist of this game. The true villain. She was the reason why our entire life started to go downhill. No, I shouldn't even say that. Our life went downhill because of eight years ago when Shiki died. But he was living a normal life, quote unquote normal life, for almost eight years plus. Until Kohaku planned everything to bring Shiki back. And she made a gamble. If she can remember who she is, she would stop everything and not kill the Tono family. But if Shiki doesn't remember, everyone's gonna die, including herself. So let's start. Yeah, let's skip. It's only a few minutes. Sorry, Shio. I can't help you. I already seen all these scenes. I'ma eat in the cafeteria. Whoa, this is new? What the hell? <laughs> Almost all the seats in the cafeteria are taken. Because I spaced out in the hallway, empty seats are pretty much non-existent at this point. Aren't there any empty seats? I cast my gaze over the crowded cafeteria. There shouldn't be any spare seats this late. But I said to check the tables out anyway. Ah, uh, I'm surprised. No, I'm astounded. There, plain as day, is a table with not two, not even three, but four unoccupied seats. There are two students sitting at the table, and it seems like one of them noticed me during my efforts to locate a seat. No, Tono! The student vigorously waving his hand and my is my dear classmate with dyed orange hair. Uh uh, I gotta check my voice. Too. My head hurts. But there isn't anywhere else to sit, so I have no choice but to return the wave and walk towards the table where my friend is sitting. Oh, let me scoot up. I won't get close. An unexpected person is sitting at the table with him. Huh? Shio Senpai? Ah, if it isn't Tono Ken. We point at each other simultaneously. Yo, Tono! Hey, wait, Senpai, do you know Tono? Yes, I met him once today already. We bumped into each other with a bang today, so they didn't meet Tono Kun. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I lowered my head in apology. Not at all. I'm also sorry for spacing out like that. You are a serious person, aren't you, Tono Kun? Serious? No, not really. Smiling, Senpai gives a satisfied nod. How should I say this? Senpai has a unique atmosphere around her. But it's sure surprising that Tono and Inoue couldn't know each other. Could it be that you two are in the same class? That's right! Me and Tono are more than just casual acquaintances. We've been in the same class since our first year, and we've been inseparable best friends since middle school. My best friend strikes the table with a bang with emphasis. Is it just me, or is he more hyper than usual? Come on, best friend, sit down. If you just keep standing there vacantly, your Chikara Udon is going to get stale. Hurry up and sit down, and let me hear all about how you get to know Senpai. Arihiko slaps my back cheerfully. Wow, I really have no story like Arihiko might be hoping for. There are no other seats available. Reluctantly, I take a seat next to him. It seems Arihiko is close with Senpai. In contrast with me, who only met her for a few times, he's able to talk to her quite casually. By the way, Senpai, you said you ran into Tono. What happened? Yes, I bumped into Tono in between classes. I wasn't hurt, but Tono bumped his head. Hmm, I wouldn't have thought Tono would do something as clumsy as that. This guy may look spaced out, but he's actually an unbelievably sharp guy. He doesn't like to depend on others, and he hates causing trouble for others. I, I also got that impression. He was only concerned about me when we ran into each other, and he apologized to me just now too. See? That's the kind of guy he is. So he doesn't make those kind of mistakes. 
Ah, uh, could it be that your anemia is acting up again? Ariko's voice shows a serious concern for my physical health. So now we know the reason for his anemia. They kind of told us in Shio Rao, but I never really understood. And they told us again in Akira Rao, I'm like, huh? But when they sold us in Hisui Rao, I was like, oh, it makes sense. The reason why Tono passed out sometimes is because Roa is sucking his life force. Underneath the, he's underneath the gymnasium school basin. Oh, excuse me. No, that's not it. I was running to the office to deal with some details for me moving. That's why I ran into Senpai. Really? Well, I thought you became careless because you were depressed over the move. I did go forward his arms and nod to himself in agreement. And then, Tona Kun, are you changing schools? Senpai exclaimed almost hysterically. I'm not changing schools, Senpai. I'm just changing my place of residence. So I filed the paperwork for a change of address. Huh? So that means you're going to be living alone? No, I'm just going back to my real home. It's not that, it's that, it's that fancy place on top of the hill. I still can't quite believe it yet. Oh, could that possibly be the Tonosan mansion? Senpai asked with some hesitation. The western style house on top of the hill is probably seen as something special to the residents of this town. I haven't been there for eight years. But even in my memories, the Tona Mansion was ridiculously large. Yeah, that's right. I don't think it's the right place for me either, but it's too late now that I'm done moving. Mmm, you don't seem too happy about it. It's not a particularly good or bad thing. I don't really understand it myself. Well, even if it is your house, it's been eight years, right? I can understand it feeling restless. It's probably feel like someone else's house for a while. I wonder if that's so. I haven't gone back yet, so I don't know. Well, I'm a bit relaxed since I've always got a refuge at your place. Hmm. Listen, you. I'm not impressed with how you can stay at a house every time something bad happens. I like your personality trait of not standing out, but I hate it how you always too reserved for a long time now. Ariko strikes the table with a bang again. Well, everything Ariko said is true, so there's no way to fight back. Inoue Kun, does Tono Kun really stay at your house that often? Yeah, he does. That damn Tono is too reserved towards his parents. He would come to my place every long vacation. He's reserved towards them because they're taking care of him. That's why he comes over to my place, where we conveniently have an empty room. Since he looks pretty decent, my sister took a liking to him. And he shamelessly comes to stay with us without paying a cent. Ariko first trembles, as if to say, unforgivable. Taking care of Tonokun. Uh, Ariko clamped a hand over his mouth. Sorry, I should have thought before I spoke. It's okay. You didn't say anything bad. I got to eat my chikara udon without looking at Ariko. Really? Yeah, you're right. If you complain about that, you'll be in some punishment. Fuck you, Ariko. Ariko nods to himself in agreement. His overwhelming optimism is something I am truly envious of. Tonokun, um, did you not get along with your previous family? No, that's not it. This guy had no problems with the Arimas. On the Arimas, they were the family who took care of him. They're finally nice people. They're really nice people. And from what I could see, they're a happy family. Even so, he refused to be their adopted child, and he escaped to my place every vacation. Sheesh. Just what were you not satisfied with anyway? There's nothing I wasn't satisfied with. It's just that I received so much from them already, I didn't want to be a further burden on them. Senpai drops her shoulder and falls silent. Whenever they say drop shoulder, I gotta drop my shoulder to me. I don't want that gamer hunch. It looks like she's sorry for asking about my family situation. It's okay, Senpai. Sorry for making you listen to something so boring. Huh? Not at all. I'm sorry for asking you something so strange too. Senpai forces herself to look cheerful. The topic might be fine for a long time friend like Arihiko, but a complex matter like this would only have been troublesome for Senpai. And to put my point, Senpai sits there uneasily. Listen, Senpai. Um, I'm finished eating, so I'll be leaving now. I'm really sorry. Senpai lowers her head in a quick bow and leaves her seat. Only me and Arihiko remains at the table. Sorry. 
You were falling to eat with just the two of you, but I got in your way. Don't worry about it. That was my fault for not paying attention. I thought it was bad for Senpai, actually. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Arihiko slips away at his udon. It looks like it got cold while we were talking. Well, that was convenient for us anyway. I got something to talk to you about in private, so it was lucky that Senpai left first. What's wrong? I'm getting all serious all of a sudden. I tell you now, I don't have any money. From today onwards, I'm supposed to be living life as a penniless youth. It's not that, damn it. What I want to know is this. What's really going on with you, Tono? What do you mean? You've been at the Arima since primary school, right? I don't know why, but it's been eight years already. Your dad has basically disinherited you. Why is he calling you back all of a sudden? I see. In his own way, he is worried about me. He didn't disinherit me. He just kicked me out of the house for some reason. Tono could. If there is a house that kicks the child out of their house for some reason, that's not a tragedy, it's a comedy. Oh, it's a party joke, but it's so boring it's not funny. Arika spread his arms and shrugs. Yeah, I guess you're right. If you get kicked out of the house, all you can do is really is laugh. And then he said some cliche like, never step foot in the house again or something, right? That's what people call disinheritance. Come think of it, I never heard why you were disinherited. Who knows? There's something I like to know too. Well, if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to. Grabbing his bowl with both hands, Arahiko drained his cold udon soup. Lunch time is short. Following Arahiko, I decide to eat on my own chikara udon. Y'all. All right, what do we do? Hmm, get a hold of myself and head back to the mansion. Yep. And then there's the Sasuke scene. I walk along a different path than the one I usually take. Passing through unfamiliar streets, I slowly approach the Tona Mansion. The surroundings are not completely unfamiliar. After all, I had lived here until I was 9 years old. 8 years ago. Oh, you know what's weird? I was reading the Tsukihime HD remake site. And they say 7 years ago. Or oh, that's what Google Translate say. So you think they, they made Tono younger? Or, I don't know, that's weird. I think they made Tono younger. I don't think he's 18, I, he's technically 17. So I think they made him 16 in the HD remake. I don't know why, but all right, whatever. My feelings are a little complex. The path home is nostalgic, yet fresh. Up until just now, I had not looked forward to returning to the Tono household. Now it doesn't seem so bad. The house I look, Wait, where's Sasuke? Oh, whatever. I think Sasuke's gonna come in later. The house I lived in until I was nine years old. Right now, my sister Akia is in the utterly un-Japanese Western Time Mansion. Tono Makihisa, my old man who hated me, and the master of the Tono household died a few days ago. My mother died from illness after Akia was born, so the Tonos would dwindle down to me and my sister. Being the eldest son, you would think I would stand to become the Tono heir, but I have no such privilege. To become the Tona heir means being bound by strict upbringing. I have lost count of the number of times my father had scolded me over of my dislike for not being able to live freely. That was when I got involved in that accident. My body became weakened. My father saw it as a good opportunity to get rid of me. His reasoning was something along the lines of someone who could die any moment can't become the heir, even if he is the eldest son. Sadly for my father, I betrayed his expectation by making a recovery. But my sister Akia was already deemed to be the heir to the Tono household. And so I heard that Akia, who was already raised harshly in order to become a proper Ojo-sama of the Tono household, received an even harsher upbringing since then. That was a long time ago. I played together with Akia in the mansion back before the accident. After that, I never saw her again. The life of the mansion I abandoned eight years ago. Those eight years were long, and my memories at that time was largely faded. But in spite of that, there is one thing that even now continues to burn strong within my heart, and that is... Oh! Shit! Yo, we get a new choice! About that girl. By the window, to the wall! Dun, 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 dun. Ah, ski, 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 ski. 
Akia isn't the only person I haven't seen since then. I can't remember all the details because it's been eight years. But there were other children at the mansion around the same age as me. I don't remember their names, but there was two girls who were twins. The old man once said that they didn't have any relatives, so he took them to work as servants. That's weird. We played together so often when we were small, but I can't remember their names. I closed my eye and cast my mind back. I should be able to remember. There was a girl who was always cheerful. So cheerful that you would become cheerful just by looking at her. A girl with a carefree personality who was loved by everyone at the mansion. We all know who was this, right? We saw in Hisue Row, so I can go ahead and spoil, but no worries. This is Hisue. Because she was close to my age, I get along very well with her, and it seemed like every day we were running around the garden together. Let's play together, Shiki-chan, she would say, and I can remember her taking me out of my room after I secluded myself inside. She would often laugh and take shy Aki on hand, trying to make her play with us. She... maybe she was older than the both of us. She would guide me and Akia to play together, but once we started playing, she would just watch over us. Even Akia Tutor, the harsh butler, would say, I don't mind as long as Beep is with you guys, and let Akia out to play. Who's Beep? S-H-I-K-I? -I? No. K-O-H-A-K-U? Maybe Kohaku. I feel like it's Kohaku. Or maybe A-K-I-H-A? -A? No. I don't know who that beep is. H I S U I. Yeah, I don't know who that is. I think that's probably Kohaku because that's a uh, Kohaku name fits in there. But I'm much more concerned about the other girl. I don't know what kind of girl she was or why she was always like that. From the second floor, there was always a girl looking down at us every time I turned to look at the mansion. But we were playing in the garden. There's no way. You know, they're going to re HD remake the routes, right? Obviously. That's why we're doing this. So, for Kohaku route, how dramatic of a change they're going to change Kohaku? And there's so many forbidden stuff for Kohaku, right? I don't, I don't want that. I really don't want that. But I don't know what's a good replacement of... Uh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to say what happened to her. I don't. I don't like saying it. Let's just say she got violated. There you go. I think that's a. That's a. That's a. That's a proper word. So she got violated ever since she was like this young. She's been violated pretty much her entire life. That's why she have dead eyes. So, in Face Day Night, I always like to compare it to Face Day Night because they made a quote unquote ready E for everyone version, right? With Reality Noir. Even though I only read the original version, but I never read the the Ready E for Everyone version, right? Reality Noir. Sakura and Face Day Night still got violated by worms, right? You think they'll change it with worms instead of the the fucking old man? I guess it doesn't. That's still with Shiki. It's pretty fucked up too. That's still pretty fucked up with Shiki. But. I don't know, man. Fuck it. I don't know. Man, whatever Nasu can think of, bro. That's why Nasu's there. This is not my job to think of an alternate solution. Nasu, you think of it, man. But I don't want... I, I want something at least psychological equally painful or something worse. Not to say I hate Kohaku, but having Kohaku as a broken doll, I think that's a really interesting idea. I do like that. And her plotting for vengeance, I think that's an excellent, excellent, uh, I like that excellent twist. So I want that, I want that to be still in there, but they can replace the, the violate part with something else. But that's just me being soft, right? I'm, I'm a snowflake, man. I don't want to, I don't want to imagine it. Because when you read it, you imagine it, right? That's where your imagination takes you. I'm like, no, Kaku. But... No. Everything can't be sunshine. Somebody got to get hurt for my entertainment. She was the twin of that cheerful girl, but she was always gazed at us expressionlessly. 
I guess we'll find out when they uh, remake a route. I don't know when that's gonna be. It could be like two years, it could be next year, it could be three years. That's why I'm reading this, dude. I don't wanna wait. Excuse me. That girl who would never try to leave the house. All she would do was watch us from those, with those cold eyes. Was it because it bothered me so much that I thought she seemed so lonely? Most of the memories I have about Tono Mansions are about her. Well, in the end, I only ended up talking a little with her. I wonder if those girls are still at the mansion. While I think about that, I take a white ribbon out of my bag. An old white ribbon that the girl gave me at the very end. Eight years ago, after I was involved in that accident. The day I was entrusted to the Nima family. Right before I was to leave the mansion, the girl gave me this for some reason. I'm just lending it to you, so be sure to return it. Say something along those lines. She ran off. A promise made under a large tree. The weather was beautiful that day. Looking up, there was a high, high blue sky I could just lose myself in. It was my last memory of when I left the Tono Mansion eight years ago. <sighs> I put the ribbon back in my bag. It's been eight years after all. Not only do I not know if they are still at the mansion, I can't even remember their names. Even so, this ribbon is precious to me. The time with them uh, when my father had disinherited me, rather than being saddened over having been discarded by him, I felt a warmness inside when I thought she was waiting for me to return the ribbon. That's why I want to keep the promise, as long as I still remember it. I agreed to return to the mansion, because Akia is now there, all by herself. And left her there for eight years, pushing all responsibility onto her while I selfishly lived free. But there is something else. I really think I decided to return because of that promise. The white ribbon. Man, I'm not gonna lie, damn dude. This song's getting to me. And like I said, because I'm reading, my imagination is running wild. Honestly, I think I could say this. It might be too early, but I'll probably repeat myself when we complete Kohaku Rao. I think in terms of who should who should we marry? You know my favorite girl is Hisue. You know I love Sasuke. You know I can't forget about you, Akia. But I think we should marry Kohaku. I really do. It's 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 because dude man, I don't know man. I know it's a fake personality, but I can't forget about it. Right, an arc route, share route, and part of Hisuei. Yeah, Hisuei, she gone a little. Okay, she she went really crazy. We saw her true personality, right? The yin deer side of her. But, damn, dude, I I I feel like we should be there for her. She's that girl, dude. The girl with no emotion, for no reason. Her foot, her legs, they just start running. She been stuck in that 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 room. For all those years, right, being broken, abuse, and then for no reason, her legs move on their own. When she heard that, that boy's moving away. She'll never see him again. She wanted to give him at least one thing. She, I don't think they explained why she did it. She didn't know why she did it. Let's, let's be real. She did it because she loved him. Why she loved him? I don't know. It's because uh, he make her feel like she exists. He's the only one that make her feel like she exists in this entire world. Where everyone treat her like a doll. A, a used object. Shiki was the only one that waved his hand and treat her like a human being. That's all she needed, bro. She just needed someone to tell her hi. What's up? Hey, treat her like a human being. That's all she needed. All right, let's get back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Because of that promise made to the only one who said she would be waiting for me. I think that's really romantic, honestly. She waited for Shiki eight years. And if Shiki forgets, she'll kill everyone. But if Shiki remembers the promise, I don't know what's going to happen. I guess that's why we're doing this route. Let's see what happens if Shiki actually remembers the promise. Okay, so Hisuei is like, you know, Nesan has TV in her room. 
because Shiki's like, man, I want to watch some TV. And he's always like, uh, about that. The relatives, yeah. When uh, Akia kicked them out of the house, they took all the TV. And Shiki was like, damn. And I'm like, you can watch TV in their sound room. I haven't been there in a while, so. I'm like, oh, sorry. This is it. I always wanted to watch TV in their sound room. Kohaku sound room. Okay. Let's go watch TV in Kohaku sound room. Let's see. Kohaku sound room is here, isn't it? Knock, knock. A knock on the door. Kaku san, are you there? Yes, please hold on for a minute. Hey, remember I showed you earlier at the start of the video? Are we gonna see the freakish plants? The cactus punching? Gohaku Molotov? Her weird coat? Her samurai blade and a broom? I hope you get to see those. I can hear her cheerful voice from inside the room. I wait for about three minutes. Kaku san opens the door and pokes her head out. Oh, when I read Kohaku lines, I know you can hear my voice, but bro, use your imagination. Turn my voice into the Dragon Maid voice. I know you watch Kobayashi, you fucking weeb. That's why we're here. We're all weebs. So, imagine Kobe, uh, Toru. I think that's the name, right? Toru? Toru voice, the dragon. The dragon voice in Kobayashi. Alright, Kawaka-san opens the door and pokes her head off. I'm gonna I'm imagine it. That's why I'm smiling already. Ah, uh, it's you, Shiki-sama. What are you doing here at this time? Ah, uh, well, I was wondering if you'd let me watch your TV. Huh? Kawaka-san gives me a bewildered look. Ah, uh, <laughs> well, there's no TV in this house, is there? I've been living in a normal house up until now, so it's become a daily routine for me to watch TV after dinner. I guess I can't calm down without watching it or something like that, so... I don't want to read a book! Don't make me read Kohaku! Let me watch Televi! The more I say it, the more I realize I'm doing something stupid. There is something not right about barging into a lady room demanding to watch her TV. Look, even Kohaku-san is just standing there, looking bewildered. Wait, no she's not. <laughs> I guess you're right. You've been living at the Anima household up until yesterday, after all. You must think this mansion to be kind of depressing after moving here all of a sudden. Gakusan, give a cheerful laugh. Dude, even this laugh is fake. Even this smile is fake. Come on, bro. I said this in Hisura route, even though Konaku betrayed everybody, even herself. I can't hate her. This is the perfect enemy, the perfect antagonist for a visual novel. Not just a visual novel, a story. I love it when the author creates an enemy where you can't hate them no matter what. You can't hate them, but you can't forgive them. I can't hate Kohaku, but I can't forgive Kohaku for killing Akia. I can't forgive her, but I can't hate her. It's a weird feeling, but I like that feeling a lot, especially towards uh. A beloved character like Kohaku. I think she's a beloved character for me. I really like this character, dude. kohaku san gives a cheerful laugh. Mmm, let's see. Have you talked to Akia Saimo? He's still trying about this yet. You mean about coming to your room, kohaku san? kohaku san nods. No, I haven't talked to anyone about it yet. What about it? No, no, it's nothing. It's just that I would have turned you away if you have already talked to them about it. Smiling while she speaks. What? What the fuck? What? What do you mean you would turn me away if I talked to them? Uh oh. Is she gonna kidnap Shiki? Tie him up? Drug him? Rape him? No, I shouldn't use that word. Violate him! Smiling while she speaks, Kohaku san looks up and down the hallway. Uh oh. Oh god! Luckily for us, there isn't anyone else around. Please hurry up and come in. No, Shiki, don't go in her room! It'll be troublesome for a con. Oh damn, this is Kohaku room. Well, nice bed there. All right. Please just sit anywhere. I'll go make some tea. Coughing to clear my throat, I take a seat. There are all sorts of little things to Kohaku-san room. 
It might be thought of as a bit messy for a girl's room. There aren't really many things you can call cute. And what she does have is a lot of things that don't look very useful. Rather, it has an atmosphere of a room belonging to an orderly, scholarly person. Buried in a malicious objects, I found the TV. On top of the table is the remote. Maybe Kohanka-san has been watching the TV until just now. Thanks for waiting. Tea is fine for you, isn't it, Shiki-sama? Oh, fuck. You think she roofied the tea? Oh, no. If Shiki pass out, it's over. That's GG. Ah, thank you. Please don't mind me too much. Oh, no, not at all. I'm sorry I can't do much to treat you. Gonkusan says so, smiling warmly. So, the TV. What do you want to watch around this time, Shiki-sama? Ah, uh, I don't have any set programs in particular, but the news is pretty basic one. I like to hear new trends, and I like snob stories. Is that so? You seem like a very laid-back person, so I thought you'd be reading after dinner or something. <laughs> no, I don't read. I don't have such refined interests. I don't consider myself laid back either, but maybe that's the impression I give with my glasses. Yeah, bro, that's how they trick people. I feel like that's the reason I got through life. Everyone always think I'm smart because I wear glasses. I'm like, oh shit. They think I'm the smart kid. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta not let them down. Oh shit, there's a new Kohaku sprite. You think this is still real? I think that's still a fake smile. But, nah, bro, come on, man. Look at her eyes. She might be a really good actress, or I just really want to believe her. I like that smile. Ah, uh, you were glass, Shishiki sama Akiya sama didn't say anything about that at all. So I was quite surprised when I saw you at the door. I see. I haven't met Akiya since I started wearing these glasses. These glasses are just for show. I guess you could say my eyes are bad, but I think my vision is better than that of most people. Isn't that because I studied too much and went near side or anything? Ah, crap. I had an intellectual image, but did I disappoint you? Is this a real blush, dude? She never blushed at us before. I can't tell anymore, bruh. I'm a, uh, you know what? I believe in Kohaku. Everything she's doing right now, I think this is real. I don't think she's acting. Not at all. I enjoy watching TV more than reading too. I'm glad you're an energetic person, just like I thought you were. Just like I thought you were. Ah, uh, yeah, thanks. I'm a little embarrassed. Face directly with Kohaku-san carefree smile, I can't help but feel a little nervous. Ah, I'm sorry. You came to watch the news, didn't you? Kohaku-san switches the TV on. It's already 9 o'clock. The news, as it usually does, reports the day events with a little exaggeration. Oh dear, looks like there's been another one of those serial murders, Kaku-san says to herself while sitting next to me, sounding not the least bit concerned. The news is running a special feature on the serial killings. The serial murders, which begin in a neighboring town, are now beginning to be concentrated within this town. It's a pretty simple story. Late at night, he attacked young girls indiscriminately, and in the end, he drains their blood. It seems like last night's victim is a knife one so far. I wonder what the police are doing about it. Who knows? It would seem uh, pretty easy to catch a murderer who comes out at night, but maybe he's really careful so they can't trace him. You could be right. The clues about murderers build up as they kill more people, so if they haven't caught him even after nine murders, you must be really carefully prepared for the killings. A careful killer, huh? But aren't those killings spontaneous crimes? It's quite strange to think of them as being carefully prepared. You're right. If there's no evidence left at all, then maybe he's not a random killer at all. I can only think that he's got it all planned out from the start for execution. Damn, bruh. Kohaku. We all know, technically, Kohaku is the one behind the killing. She's the true mastermind. We learned that in Hisue, bro. The only reason why capital letter Shiki, right, or Aurora, whatever you want to call him, is killing, is because she gave uh, Shiki, capital letter Shiki, 
misinformation on what Akia and uh, main character Shiki looks like. So he's thinking he's killing Akia or Shiki, the main character Shiki, but he's not. Ah, I see. But then, what would be the point in killing those nine girls? Are they friends of his? Acquaintances? Hmm, probably not. If there were connections like that, then I think the police would have realized it by now. In the end, I suppose it's an incomprehensible case without motive or connections. Gakusan says all of this disturbing stuff with a smile. That's all she knows how to do, bro. She doesn't know how to do anything else. She only knows how to smile. It seems like she's not really worried about this case. These murders are happening right here in this town, Gakusan. Yo, young girl and all. So aren't you even a little scared? I'll be fine since the killing only appears late at night. If I don't go at night, I won't run into him. Gakusan really is a clear thinker. It's perhaps a bit of raw explanation, but I suppose that's how a mere news story should be treated. Sorry for intruding you. I'll be counting on you again the next time I feel like watching TV. Yo, we get to watch TV with Kohaku, let's go! Sure, I'll be waiting. Kaku-san looks up and down the hallway. Look up and down? You mean like sideways? Well, up and down, that's kind of weird, up and down. I'd like to escort you back to your room, but he's switch on his waiting there, so I have to say goodbye here. Okay. Good night. I had no idea bedtime at the mansion was at 10. Apparently, there's some kind of unwritten rule here that no one is not to be out of their room after 10. It's just a former here, even with the old man gone. Well, I guess it's only natural. I'm always getting tired of my unfamiliarity with this mansion, so I obediently return to my room. Ah, uh, when I return to my room, my bed has been made. Did he sweet do it while I was away? I'm glad she did, but it's really more than I deserve. I scratch my cheek. Then, are you there, Shiki-sama? I can hear a voice along with the knock at the door. Yeah, I'm here. Come in. Damn, that's my girl, Hisue. I don't know if she's my girl anymore. I don't know if it's out of pity. But I feel like... I really like Kohaku. I don't know if it's out of pity though. It might be. Excuse me. Damn, but he says pretty good though. Good evening. Uh, thanks for making my bed, Hisue. Hisue quietly nods in the substance. Uh, just as I thought, I'm not used to this. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell me? No, nothing for me. But Akiya-sama has instructed me to answer any question you may have. I see. There are many things I want to ask, but I'll probably get to know them as I continue to live here. Yeah, I want to know right now before I sleep is, is it true that the curfew here is at 7? Yes, the main gate is locked at 7, and all the entrances to the mansion are to be locked at 8. There's also a rule that one must try not to go walking around in the mansion after 10. That's because Aki is up after 10, and Aki has red hair after 10, that's why. Not even walking around in the mansion? Well, I got no complaints with that, but isn't that kind of harsh? Aki and I aren't children, so I don't think you have to go that far. Indeed. It is a rule, however, so please abide by it. You are aware of the recent disturbances at night, are you not, Shikisama? Yeah, that vampire thing Adahiko was talking about. Well, as long as something like that is happening, I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. Oh. Uh... What else, uh, do you mind if I ask an off topic question? Yes, what is it? I'd like to know what kind of work you and Kohaku-san do around here. I am here to serve Shiki-sama needs, and my sister Kohaku is to serve Lady Akiya-sama. In our spare time, we do the maintenance chores around the mansion. Is there anything more you would like to know? To serve? So, that's what it is after all. My shoulders suddenly feel heavier. It seems completely natural to Akia when she said it, but I'm nothing more than a normal high school student. I have no interest in having a girl around my age serving me, at least not for now. Damn, not for now. All right. By serving me, you mean you're a personal servant? Yes. Please do not hesitate to ask anything of me. Well, I get it. Going by how Akia was talking about you, it doesn't seem like I can dismiss you, 
so I'll just obediently let you serve me. Is there anything in particular you would like? Nothing in particular, but could you stop calling me Shiki-sama? To be honest, I get chills down my back when I hear it. But Shiki-sama, you are my master. That's what I'm saying, I hate. I've been living a normal life up until yesterday. I have no desire to start living a life where my, a girl my age addresses me with Sama. I see. Hisui responds with less than enthusiastic. Just call me Shiki. In exchange, I call you Hisui. Let's do away with the formalities and be more careful, uh, casual with each other. Still expressionless, Hisui lowers her eyebrows as if she's being troubled. See, bruh, Hisui always changes her facial expression, man. But you're my employer. It's not like I'm hiring you. You're the one doing the things I can't, so you're the great one. I see. Hisui gives another unenthusiastic reply. It looks like I won't be able to talk to her. And soon in just one day. You think... How happy you think Hisui got when she saw Shiki? I think Hisui got really happy, dude. I thought she... I think she got really happy. Anyway, that's how it is. Don't be so formal towards me. I'll be grateful you tell me that to your sister, Kohaku-san, too. Very well. As you say, Shiki-sama. Expressionless. Hisui bows her head. She completely failed to understand. I'll be leaving now. Please rest for now, uh, for tonight. Bowing, Hisui puts her hand on the doorknob. Oh, I forgot to ask something. Uh, hold on for a second. Running towards the door, I put my hand on Hisui's shoulder before she leaves. In an instant, Hisui's arm pushes away my arm with incredible momentum. With a whack, she slaps my hand away and leaps back. Huh? It was so sudden that that's the only thing I could say. So, the reason? The reason why Hisui did that? Now we know, right? Now that we finished the Hisui route, we know why she did that. The reason why she doesn't touch men is because of her own son. Because Ko she knows about Kohaku's situation. That Kohaku get violated every day to the point of being broken for her emoto son, right? So that Hisui can have freedom. So to pay for the sin that Kohaku is like giving her freedom. To pay Kohaku back, she never want to be dirty. So that's why she never touched men. She don't want to be dirty for the sake of her Nesan. If Nesan's going to be dirty, to keep her clean, she'll stay clean for her Nesan. Isui is expressionless, but she glares at me fiercely. Uh, did I just do something wrong? Uh, I am very sorry. She sounds very nervous. I'm not used to being touched. Please forgive me. His shoulders are faintly trembling. Excuse me. I feel like I just did something really terrible. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize if I thank you. I don't understand why myself. I just felt sorry for Hiso and I lowered my head. Are you gonna play the new Melty fighting game? Yeah, I am. I don't know who to main though. That's my problem. I main, main. I mess with roast beef and the old melty blood for like a little bit, and I really like playing roast beef too. But I don't know if roast beef is gonna come back because Shion's not gonna come back. Roast beef is most likely not gonna come back too, since her and Shion and Sasuke were like the back alley girls. So this main arc, I'm like, that's what I'm thinking. Gorilla, bro. Gorilla time main arc and plus arc is like super super top tier so she might be super super top tier and the new melty blood too he still always says nothing i get the feeling her stare is calm again you have nothing to apologize for shikisama i'm the one to blame no well maybe uh but i just i scratch my head he still stares at me pausing only to blink for a second uh what is it you wanted to talk to me about, Shikisama? That's right. I stopped her because I wanted to ask her something. Uh, I wanted to ask about Akia. She doesn't go to a boarding school. 
That was only during middle school, Shikisama. From this year onwards, Akiya-sama has special permission to attend school from home. Huh? You mean she go to school from here? Yes, but it is uncommon for her to come home before dusk like today. Akiya-sama has practiced up until dinner, so she is always home before 7. Practice? Practice what? Today's Thursday, so she won't have violin practice. Huh? Usually she's able to return before dinner on weekdays, so if you have anything to say to Akiya-sama, please let Nesana know after dinner. He swear bows to say goodbye and leaves the room. Violin practice. What on earth is that? It's not like she's some upper class or Joe summer or anything. So why would she have to do something that's bothersome as Oh wait, she is an Ojo summer. Yes. Come to think of it, my Emoto san, my sister, Tono Akia, is a natural born Ojo summer. In my memories, she was always the obedient, ever uneasier sister who always followed me around. As a child, Akia was always quiet, never even having uh, the courage to express her own desires. She was a frail girl who would always live in fear of the scolding from my father. Yeah, people really do change after eight years. After eight years, I've become the me I am now. Akia has become the Akia of right now, too. Eight years is a long time. It's half of our lives up until now. I was absent from this mansion during that vital period where a child becomes an adult. I'm sorry, Akia. I think things would have been better if I had been with her during those eight years. You know what's really fucking weird? You know in the new Tsukihime HD remake, right? It might be because it might be a mistranslated thing, but if you Google Translate the main page, it says seven years. So that means... Akia would be 15, right? And Shiki would be 16. That means Akia. She's probably still go to the Joe Summer School. Yeah, they said that she went to boarding school in middle school, so. I guess it wouldn't change that much. I unconsciously mumble an apology. You've seen this scene already. Skip. Alright, so this is, uh. This is. Nero. We're not going to see Nero. See ya. The howling continues. There's no way I can sleep like this. I can't sleep, but that's just normal. I'm sleepy, so I'll pass. Pulling the sheets over me, I stretch out on the bed. I can just think of the howling as the sound of something mundane, like cars driving by on the street. <sighs> Today been a very long day. I'm mentally tired from eating dinner in this unfamiliar mansion and my conversation with Akia and everyone else. After all that, the howling is just background noise. I close my eyes and gently fall asleep. Oh shit. Who is that? Uh oh. I bet that's Kohaku. Because this is her route. Uh, I think I just heard something. Half awake, I look at the clock. It's just past two. It's been two hours since I heard the dog howling. The dog's howling have already stopped. The mansion is so quiet, I can hear the clock ticking in silence. I hear her again. Inside the mansion, from the lobby? Could it be a burglar? It's not possible. Impossible. The mansion contents are outrageously valuable. On top of that, with no one here now except Kohaku-san, Hiso, and Akia, and myself, it's very insecure. I get out of bed and slip out of the room quietly. If it's a burglar, Akia and everyone will be in danger, so I can't let this one go. I'll just look down on the second floor into the lobby. That should be safe enough. There's nothing wrong there. No, someone's there. The figure that enters the entrance. Oh, it's Akia. That caused the lobby wobbling. A certain step is Akiha. Huh? She's not going to her own room, but to the second floor. But to the first floor of the west wing. There's only one thing there. A kohaku room and my old man's room. What is she doing at this time of night? I can murmur all I want, but there won't be any answers forthcoming. After gazing at the lobby for a while, I decide to return to my room. Damn, we're not gonna find out. We kind of know. They don't. They didn't really tell us, but so we know that Akia sucks Kohaku blood. And what Akia doesn't know is Kohaku is fucking up Akia. She's making her less human every time she sucks Kohaku blood. But that's because Kohaku is trying to kill everyone, so. And that's part of her grand scheme. 
But well, Akia probably went to Kohaku room because she's feeling hot, right? She's not feeling human. So she's probably going to get some blood from Kohaku. Well, she probably has something to do on when to see Kohaku-san. I feel bad about sneaking around watching her. And I don't want to just ask her about everything she does. Sleep, sleep. Just school tomorrow. I bury myself in bed and close my eyes. As I fall asleep, my thoughts keep returning over and over to Akia, hollowed eye figure in the lobby and how something seemed wrong. You view the scene. Yeah, skip it. We're going to greet Kohaku, right? Obviously, because Kohaku's our girl for this row. Morning, Kohaku-san. Today's a lovely day. Yes. Good morning, Shiki-san. Kohaku-san delivers an ordinary morning greeting with a smile on her face. Did you sleep well last night? I was worried you might be inconvenienced staying in an unfamiliar mansion and all. Uh, no, there was no problems. I used to live here, so after all, and now I got to watch. I got you to watch over me, Kohaku-san. That's weird. Kohaku's not watching you. That's his way. Oh, you're quite good at this, Shiki-san. Huh? No, I'm just saying what I think. What is it I'm good at? Kohaku-san just looks at me, smiling. Somehow I feel embarrassed when she looks directly at me. So I shift my gaze to the side. And then... <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I realize another stare. One which had been on me silently for a while now. Uh, hey there. I give a light wave to greet her. Akia continues to stare at me, or perhaps glare would be the better word. Um, uh, well, uh, good morning, Akia. Oh, you don't have to force yourself to greet me. Please go right ahead and ignore me. I didn't mean it like that, girl. You know it. You know I love you, Akia. I'm sorry, but we can only choose one, so we're choosing Kohaku. Because she need us. I guess you need us too, but... Everyone needs Shiki. That's the fucked up part. If they don't have Shiki by their side, their life's going to continue being fucked up. That's that's messed up, man. Can there be a Haram ending? After all, it seemed like you prefer to enjoy the morning with Kohaku. Uh, I get a weird thing. It's not like I had intended to ignore her. I just said hello to Kohaku-san. Please don't tease Shiki-san too much, Akiya-sama. You don't have much time if Shiki-san hasn't finished his breakfast yet. Well, that's Nisan's fault for waking up late, isn't it? He's just getting what he deserves for leaving everything to do in a rush in the morning. Hmm, da. Akiya sniffs. Sniffs? What? <laughs> it seems like my failure to greet her was uh, another point she was unimpressed with, in addition to her objection to my late arrival. Uh, Kohaku-san, is my breakfast ready? Yes, I laid it out in the dining hall. Please eat up at your leisure. That won't do, Kohaku. Nissan has no time to eat breakfast at this time. Hey, listen, Akia. It's only seven, so I got at least that much. It's an easy 30-minute walk from here to school, so I can take easy for at least 10 minutes, can I? Are you saying you're going to finish... Breakfast in just 10 minutes? <laughs> what is Akio? We all know why she's like that, bro. She's like that because she got to go to school, man. It takes her an hour. So she's like pretty much late to school every day. While waiting just to see Shiki face, bro. That's all she want to see. She just want to see Nissan face before she go to school. That's all she ever wished for. You're not some starving dog. <laughs> so if you're going to eat breakfast, I'd like you to take your time. I get words really do have thorns in them. You have already viewed the scene? Yeah, I know. Alright. That's about Sasuke. Then we didn't even see Sasuke. Oh damn, we're not even we don't care about Sasuke. Alright. Well. That's sad. I care about Sasuke. Alright, let's sit silently. Skip it, skip it. Shit, some parts, right? No, I don't feel well. Let me see. I'm gonna say, no, I really don't feel well.
Skip it. We're going to see Konhaku. Hell yeah. Konhaku time. That's right. She's been taking care of me since yesterday. So if I have time to fool around, then I should go help Konhaku san. I guess she's sweeping in the garden. If it's just sweeping the garden, even I can help with that. Dude, I swear to God, I want to see the, I want to see the katana. I, I don't know. I don't think they'll do it. I think that's multi blood only. So I guess that's okay. I psych myself up and head towards the garden. Look like a regular broomstick to me. Ah, oh, welcome back, Shiki-san. Kaku-san faces me with a tender smile. Thanks. You are sweeping the garden by yourself? Yes. The gardener would not be here for another three days, so I thought I should just straighten up these fallen leaves. Kaku-san holds the bamboo broom in both hands. She looks like she's really enjoying herself. Cleaning up this large area by herself should be quite a huge task. You're really something, Kaku-san. I'll complain if I have to sweep this whole garden. Oh no, it's not like that at all. This isn't my duty, so I have to do it to put food on the table. This is why I must push back my tears to sweep this garden. Wait, uh, <laughs> Kohaku san laughs and gives a carefree smile. Come on, bruh. We all know it. I trust this smile. He certainly is cheerful. Besides, there are some things I do in the back courtyard, so when I'm not busy, I always check up on the garden. Huh? Things you do? Like what? Well, let's see. Ever since I was a child... Oh, shit! It's the flowers! Fucking here is Johnny! This is where the flowers came from! And, uh, if you play Melted Blood, you can look at it in the, the new trailer. Look at the new trailer. I showed it earlier, too. She has like different kind of flowers. She has flowers that like shoot fireballs. One that's called Johnny. One that spits like poison. And one that like drill you in the asshole, bro. Just like fucking fly, skyrocketed. She grows flowers, bro. I got so many kind of flowers on whim that it is more like a jungle than a flower bed. <laughs> Kaku Sun laughs brightly once again. But I didn't know that. I really go back there, so I didn't realize it, but I guess I have seen something like a flower garden from the second floor. I see. You like gardening, Kohaku-san? What kind of flowers? Well, lots of kind. But most of them are morning glories. Morning glories. That seemed like a fitting choice. Really? Oh, shit! Okay, this is not related to Melty Blood. Let's go back to Tsukihime. Let's rewind it back to Hisui Rao. So in Hisui Rao, Morning Glories is what she used to drug Shiki in capital letters Shiki. So Morning Glory, what she used that flower for is it put the patient to sleep. And whatever she tell the patient, they won't remember it when they wake up, but it'll be in their conscious. So she tells Shiki, go kill yourself, go kill yourself, go kill yourself. It'll be in his conscience to go kill himself, but he won't remember it. That Kohaku was the one that told him to kill himself in his sleep. So, that's what the morning glories are for. It's to, like, uh, it's to roofie the patient and, uh, kind of brainwash them. That's fucked up. Really, I always thought that they didn't quite match the mood of the mansion, though. No, not the mansion. I mean, they suit you well, Gohaku-san. Morning glories are so pretty in their simplicity. Damn, he called him flirty. You got the wrong idea, Shiki. She used that to drug people. Shiki-san, I think you got the wrong idea. The one in the gardens are Korean morning, morning glories. They're a bit dangerous. Gohaku-san laughs as if something was really funny. Is that so? But Korean morning glories are still morning glories, right? Yes, it is also known as crazy eggplant or datura. The flowers can be made into an anesthetic. The world's first genetic general anesthetic, susan was made in Japan with the Korean morning glories as a main active ingredient. If you drink it by accident, it will cause dangerous hallucinations. So please be careful, Shiki-san. 
yeah. Oh, I don't really think I ever accidentally drink the flower, Kahakasan. Oh, damn, dude. I also want to grow some cactus and other cute things like that. But Akiya-sama was vehemently against it, so I had to stop. Damn, that's fucked up. So we don't get to see in Tsukihime. So, in Melty Blood, she has a cactus. The cactus name is... I think the cactus name is Johnny. I think that's Johnny. And what it does is it punches people. We don't know what Kohaku did to that cactus. But for some reason, the cactus she grows punches people. And I guess that is pretty cute. I see why Akia told her to stop growing a cactus. It probably punched Akia on accident or something. It really is too bad that I tell you all these things, but can I show them to you? Saying that, she takes up the room again. Okay, so that makes sense. Now I know, right? I know where the flowers came from in Melty Blood. It's because Kohaku likes to grow flowers. Well, she grew them to kill people. <laughs> I mean, they told us that in Hisui Realm. She used the morning glories to hallucinate and brainwash Shiki in capital letter Shiki. I see. So you sweep the garden because you like flowers and stuff like that. No, that isn't really the reason. Actually, I'm a terrible uh, cleaning inside the mansion. I don't know why, but I always seem to break something. Huh? I seem to break or rip the most valuable thing in the room. Well, but I don't do it on purpose, right? But he's a chan told me, Nessan, maybe you should stick to the family finances and cooking. How mean of her. Kaku-san is still smiling while acting angry. Because she can only make one facial expression. But this is quite different from my first impression of her. You don't mean... Kohaku-san, are you clumsy? My statement is more of a blurted outburst than a direct question. Kohaku-san groans in disappointment. You're saying it too, Shiki-san? Hisui-chan is too cruel and says, Nesan, you are too slow. While Akiya-sama teases me and says, You are not being careful enough. I don't mess up because I want to. You're so mean. That's right. There really aren't too many people that mess up because they want to. I didn't know what to say, so I tried to be somewhat neutral. That's right. It's a thought that counts, so I think they should all look at if I mess up 10 or 20 times. Kaku-san started quickly sweeping the leaves again. Well, I didn't come here to get in her way. Kaku-san, is there another broom? Yes, there are many in the shed. What are you going to use it for? No, I just thought I'd sweep up some leaves too. Kaku-san broom freezes oh damn that would not do shiki-sama if you were to do that i would be in trouble get in trouble who would get you in well i guess there really is only one person who would yes kakusan nods quickly don't worry about it i'm doing it because i want to so it's wrong for akia to complain if akia has any complaint she'll have to blame me not you oh uh, that is true isn't it so relax it's more fun if we both do it. Oh, Shiki, let's go. Uh, Shiki-san, you do not seem to understand Lady Akia. If you did that, she would get angry for another reason, I think. I don't get it, but you're saying she'll get angry whatever happens? <laughs> that's it. So please do not worry about sweeping. So smiling, Kohaku-san says this directly. Oh, no matter what happens, Akia will get mad at you. Then I don't want to make any trouble for you. Sorry, forgive me for just being careless. No, you are not being careless. I'm very happy you wanted to help me. Even though she says that with a bright smile, I feel bad because I really did want to help her. I sigh. Kakusan looks up at my face cheerfully. Shikisan, did you really want to help me? Yeah, if I won't get you in trouble. Then shall we go somewhere else? Oh fuck! I guess someone will find us here, so I think it'll be better if we sweep behind the mansion. Behind? In the backyard? Yes. I guess someone would never find us there, so we can sweep all we want. Here you go. Kaku-san hands me the broom she had in her hands. I would go to the shed to get another broom, so please go ahead, Shikisama. You think this broom has a katana in it? That'll be fucking sweet.
Please do not let he switch on Akia sama spot you as you go, okay? Try, try, try. Remember, I showed you the running animation of uh, Konaku in the beginning of the stream? Remember, she runs like a, a Looney Tune cartoon. Like, uh, what's the name? Something Coyote. She has that funny ass, uh, that run animation is cute. Konaku san dashes with quick, light steps. She really looks like a mischievous kid. Before I realize it, a grin creases my lips. Akia and Hisue doesn't seem to be joking type, so Kahaku-san's brightness is quite charming. Alright, let's do this! Gripping the broom that Kahaku-san was using earlier, I covertly walk to the garden behind the mansion. What? Viewed this scene already. Dang. I want to see Shiki sweep of Ko uh, Kohaku, but I guess we're not going to see it. I always get scared to be alone with Kohaku. I'm not going to lie. It's because we all know Kohaku is a Yandir, so I don't know what she'll do to Shiki. Oh, what do we do here? <clears throat> Go and look. There's a lot of skipping. I guess it makes sense. This is the last route of the game, so. I like her. I hate her. I can't answer. Oh, this is Sasuke. We're going to say, like. We killed Sasuke here. This was Sasuke die. Okay, so we killed Sasuke cold heartedly. And now we're coming back home. <sighs> Let me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, cool. The door opens with a creak. With a heavy body and dulled mind, I make it back to the mansion. My footsteps drag behind me. The moonlight illuminates my figure, making it look like an exhausted ghost. My left arm hurts where Yumizuka wounded me. The bleeding has stopped, and the gradual lessening of the pain tells me it couldn't have been too deep. Damn, you think it's Kohaku fault? You think Kohaku planned this? No way, she didn't have a grudge against Sasuke, right? Unless she did. Why did Sasuke turn into a vampire? I didn't understand that part. Since uh, Kohaku was the one manipulating all the killing, technically, right? Every time Shiki kills someone, it's because of Kohaku. And then, and then remember we always see in those nightmares in Hisue and Akia route, right? Roa, let's call him Roa. Just to not confuse him with Shiki. Roa, keep looking for a girl that looks like Akia. Long hair. Sasuke looked nothing like Akia. She doesn't even have long hair. She got twin cells. So I'm thinking the only reason Sasuke would turn into a vampire, it has to be because of Kohaku. But I wonder why she planned that. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe they're explaining here. I reached the stairs. I don't even care about treating my room. Right now, I just want to stumble back to my room and sleep like a rock. Huh? Nissan? And then, from the middle of the stairs, I hear Akia's voice. Aki, huh? I raise my head. In front of me, I see Akia, who just made it to the bottom of the stairway. Ah. Uh, Akia is silent. Something about her appearance is a little strange, but I don't even care right now and continue to stumble up the steps. You think she has, like, red hair? I bet in a remake, they're probably going to give her highlights. She's probably going to have, like, red highlights. That's what they did in, uh... That's what they show Akia character. She keep having red highlights. I think it looks really good, though. Right now, I should just go to my room. So I have to keep going up the stairs. I dazedly make up my way past Akia's still figure. I have to get up the stairs. Hey, please, wait, Nissan. Just where do you go distantly that evening? Who knows? Besides, this is... What is Akia doing standing here at this hour anyway? Trying to glide down the stairs as quietly as possible. It seemed like she was going to go outside just now. It doesn't have anything to do with you, Akia. I'm going to my room, so don't bother me. 
bother, I... Akia gasps and cuts off mid-sentence. Nissan, you look. Her previously shocked eyes become calm. Your left arm is injured, right? Your clothes are pretty dirty, too. Don't worry about it. It doesn't even hurt anymore. It doesn't hurt? That can't be true. You look like you could collapse at any moment, and there's blood clotted all over your left arm. Goodness, what in the world were you doing, Nissan? I can't answer, and only avert my gaze. I couldn't possibly explain everything that happened tonight. And more than that, I don't ever want to talk about Yumizuka to anyone. Nothing much. I was just walking around and got sucked into a little drunken brawling. Answering simply, I climbed past her. But with a pull, Akia places my hand on my shoulder. Nissan, I'll get mad. With a weak voice, Akia looks directly at me. Dang. If only Shiki can make everybody happy. With her face like that, I've become even more unable to tell her what really happened. I want to protect Akia. But I also want to protect Hisue. I want to protect Kohaku. She and Art kind of, kind of protect themselves. Right? They just need to kill Rora, right? And that's pretty much our objective anyway with Hisue, Kohaku, and Akia. We're going to kill Rora. But they need me. Ark and Shio, they don't really need Shiki. They can live their life after Roa dies too, without Shiki. Just like that, time passes without either of us speaking. After some minute pass, Akia lets out a breath and drops her shoulder in resignation. Fine, I will let it go. Akia grasps my uninjured arm, right arm, and head towards the sitting room. Hey Akia, I want to go back to my room to sleep. No, I won't ask you any more about it, so you will have to let me treat your injuries, okay? So come this way. I can't help but be worried if you go to sleep looking like that. Still holding onto my arm, she dragged me, um, excuse me. She dragged me with her to the lobby. Oh well, this is just how it is. I resign myself to doing as Akia says. The treatment was quite simple. I guess it was really not that bad to begin with. After applying some disinfectant and wrapping the wound in gullies, my treatment is over. But to finish that simple care by herself, I can't take the time with soap and warm water and wipe my face. All finished. This uniform is done for, so we will have to get a new one prepared tomorrow. But well, mine is still no. I can't really has to ask any question about what happened and simply to care of my injury. I'm a little surprised. I thought she won't let Kohaku-san and Hisui take care of it, but Akia did it all with a smile. Her gentleness is completely different from the way she was these past three days. I think about Akia from long ago. Nissan. Hey, it's not finished, so please go back to my room. Did you say you would rather go to sleep than keep me company? She may still be resenting my words from earlier, because she sounds very dissatisfied. Come on, bro, just hang out with Akia just a little bit. Just a little bit. There's still something wrong with my brain, but I do understand how much Akia worried over me. Yeah, thanks Akia. Is it because I'm still woozy? I still let my true feelings show. Damn yeah, bro, Akia, I still love you. I still love you, Akia. Huh? Akia's face turns red, and she shrinks away from me. Oh, I, I don't think it was anything to thank me for. You would help me if I was hurt, right, Nissan? That may be true, but it it still makes me happy. Stuttering, I finally realize it. I am quite emotionally detached right now. But I honestly am happy that rather than Kohaku-san and Hisoi, Akia was the one who treated my wounds. Don't say such stupid things. Please hurry back to your room. Or well, are you hurt somewhere else? Akia says so and shift her gaze. Nissan, your shoulder, and there's blood. I can place her hand on my shoulder. She peels my shirt. She peels back my shirt. My exposed shoulder and neck. Musica bite marks and dry blood are still there. Nissan, this. Oh shit! She like got bitten by a vampire. In that instant, the air freezes. The fang shaped wound on my neck. 
I don't know how to even begin to explain that. It descend into silence. I guess slowly leans her body over mine. Nissan, there's still blood flowing here. Her voice is terribly taut with strain. The grip on her hand on my shoulder becomes stronger. Her body stops in position somewhere between touching mine and not. What should I do? We should stop the bleeding, right? Her voice sounds delirious. Akia? I call her her name, but I still have our unspeakable disquiet. disquiet. Mm. There's no reply. But instead, I feel a warm sensation along my neck. Damn, she's giving her life force to you again. What? Her voice fades away. I get a face is right next to mine. The sensation of rubbing. A contact. Wetness. Akiha! My numb sense of reason can't grasp what's going on. My hesitantly touching tongue. The red tongue that fearfully touched my neck. Damn, she's... What do you mean, Akiha? What are you doing? Shaking. The, the, the shaking fingers that embraces me. The warmth of Akiha's body. Uh, Akiha's licking the blood dripping down my neck. But it really isn't anything to be alarmed over. It's just like what you do as a kid to stop the bleeding. Ah, uh, okay. But it feels so sweet, I can't say anything. I can't must think the same way, as she just for no reason brushes her teeth. Oh! It gets my wound. All of a sudden, a sound comes from the lobby. I can't pull back. I, I'm so sorry, Nissan. Her face is pure red. I can't run away. What? Left by myself in the city, I reach my hand to my neck. The warmth is still lingering there faintly. She didn't have to run away. No, bro, that's weird. I will not let... Bro, whatever, man. Let's continue. I don't want to think about it. Let's just say, uh... Whatever, bro. I will let Akia lick me. But not if I think she's my, you know, man, really. He doesn't know. So it's weird. I murmur to myself and shake my head. Licking the moon like that. I, I did a lot of that as a child. Oh, shit. I did that. Oh, damn, bro. What the hell? You did that to Aki and Kohaku? Okay. I did that to Aki and Kohaku when they got hurt. But that's just an act from child like purity. Only done as a child. Both of us grown up like this now and being the opposite gender. We can't really use that method anymore. But what is she doing? She was acting pretty strange. Well, I guess I'm also strange right now. As if in a dream, I don't recall what exactly happened. Even what Aki and I just did, I feel like it's all be a dream tomorrow morning. I, and I reach my room. I lurch to my bed and collapse. Mm, tiredness closes around my brain. My exhaustion is more in my body than my mind. My body must be trying to haunt everything in order to heal quickly. Uh, it's exertion. Before that, I take a deep breath and trace my fingers along my neck once more. Ah, uh, a little surprise. The two fang marks. The blood really was stopped by Akia's lips. Then she give her your heat. Chapter 4. Cradle Garden. 4th day, October 24th, Sunday. Cradle Garden. That was weird. I don't, I don't, I don't like the directions going. Not like it's bad, but we all know Kohaku personality, right? She's a Yandir. This is very weird. Akia is getting very intimate already. Very early. She didn't even get that intimate in the in her own route. You think the direction they're going to is Akia is going to get very intimate with Shiki. And Kohaku is going to kill them both. Because, I mean, Kohaku is a Yandir. And when you think of Yen Deer, you think someone got to die. I hope that's not the direction they're going to. I won't dislike it, but I'll be sad if one of them have to die. I mean, just like in uh, Hisuei. Well, actually, in Hisuei, both of them die. But come on, man. Can we just let Akia live? Don't kill her. I wake from a long sleep. The sunshine from the window looks closer to the midday than morning. It must be because of how late I got back last night. It seems I overslept. Dragging myself up from bed, I look down at my hand. The sensation of how I stopped Yumizuka remains. Two nights ago. When I met Yumizuka and saw that hideous dream. 
If only yesterday was just a dream. But wishing it won't make it so. I have no clue why or how Yumizuka becomes a vampire, and I couldn't do anything to help her. No, only Yumizuka had become like that. There was probably no way for anyone to help her. She was already dead. All I did was return that corpse somehow moving about as if it were a living thing back to being a dead body. That's the only way I can think of it. But still, excuse me Shikisama. With that voice I have been accustomed to, he has entered the room. Good morning Shikisama. How are you feeling today? Uh, I slept well, so I don't feel bad at all. Is that so? Hearing that makes me feel very relieved. Even though she says that, I don't see even her relaxed shoulders. Even, I don't see her even relax her shoulders. Or give any indication of it. But I feel relief as well. Because of what happened last night, the long night is over. Because I don't have to enter that unnatural world any longer, my heart can relax. Thanks, he's away. You always come to check up on me from early in the morning, right? Concern means a lot to me. Oh dear, he's away. Not at all. It is my duty to be concerned with your welfare. There's a hint of happiness in Hisue's expression. Moreover, I feel like I've been rescued, somewhat rescued. While I've been sleeping in a bed like this, Hisue came as always to wake me up. With just that trivial thing, I honestly feel like I have returned to my normal life. Um, Shikisama, this is somewhat difficult for me to say, but can I? Difficult to say. Is it about me sleeping until noon? I really can't do anything but apologize. No, that's not what I meant. But it is perhaps related to when you went to sleep. He swear fidgets with her fingers as she struggles to come up with the right words. Um, I did not say anything, but I can't sign my find out about last night. Huh? About last night? What? I mean, when you left late last night, Shikisama. I unconsciously turned my eyes away from her. I thought I managed to slip away undetected, but I should have known Hisui would still find out. Oh, I was like, bro, you knew Akia would find out. Oh, Hisui, though. He was talking about Hisui. Shikisama, you return late at night, has gained the attention of Akia-sama, so I believe you will be asked to explain yourself sooner or later. She is in the sitting room and may be angry, so please be prepared. I see. I got it. I'll be prepared. But if it's about last night, then Akia definitely knows about it already. And after that, it was Akia who took care of me when I was in the complete stupor. About that. Will it be occurring again? I cannot stop you. But if you continue doing such things, I must tell Akia something. No, nothing like that uh, last night will happen again. Everything has ended last night. There won't be any phone calls anymore. Yes, it really has ended. With these words, it truly is over. Yuzuka Sasuke is no more. The vampire shulking, skulking the streets has vanished. I, with my own hand, sent away a classmate who said she liked me for all eternity. Hisui looks at me with a painful expression on her face. Jeez, if Hisui is making that sort of face, that must look terrible right now. Well, I should get up sooner or later. Hisui, is Akiya still there? Here? She's an awfully busy person, so does she have a routine on day off? Yes, she does have plans during her day off, but today she is still in the mansion. She has plans, but she's still here. I don't quite get it, but, well, I'll go and get changed. So please head to the sitting room before me. Yes. Well then, please excuse me. As usual, Hisui walks away without a sound. But I forgot something really important. Hisui! Yes. What is it, Shikisama? Yeah, I forgot to say something. Thanks for coming to wake me up. Aw, it's a little late, but good morning, Hisui. Yes, please have a nice day, Shikisama. Damn, bro, she's so happy. Bro, she loves you, bro. It is fucked up. Everyone loves you. I, uh, I don't know about Shio and Ark, right? If they never met Shiki, of course you wouldn't love Shiki, right? But Akia, Hisue, Kohaku, they, they love you, man. For eight years! Eight plus years. This, they held the true feelings. Well then, I should hurry up and change and head to the sitting room.
Yeah, you seen this scene. She's gonna say, Nissan! What's Akira's favorite car? Nissan! We're gonna help uh, Kohaku. What the fuck? What? No way! Are we almost... We're almost done! I guess it, it makes sense. We skipped a lot. So... Yeah, Kohaku route is pretty short. Well, let's go help Kohaku. She deserves it. She's our girl. To be honest, kohaku san has the hardest job because she has to prepare the feast for the four of us. I think we might be able to finish kohaku san route. I looked at the... The timeline. Well, not the timeline, but the guide. It's a spoiler-free guide, so it's like very bare minimum information. Just have like numbers and shit. But... I think I might be able to finish just this stream, but no promises. That's how short her route seems. But Kohaku is the last route, so you gotta remember that. So, the majority of the scenes we already saw is from the other girls' route. Akiya and Hisui. To be honest, kohaku san has the hardest job because she has to prepare the feast for the four of us. I don't think I can be that much of a help in cooking, but I'll go see kohaku san The kitchen has already become a battlefield. On each counter, there's a mountain of ingredients, and I get the urge to turn around and go back as soon as I enter. Shiki-san, is there anything I can do for you? Kaku-san peeks her head through. No, I was thinking maybe I could help or something. But it seems like I entered a world I shouldn't be. Ah, that really helps. To tell the truth, I was thinking of going to ask you for some help. Really? And she did. In a Hisuei route, when you go help... Oh, excuse me. When you go help Hisuei, Hisuei's like, go help Nesan. You're like, nah, I want to help you, Hisuei. And then Hisuei said that Nesan can't do anything besides, you know, cook and sweep the floor. And then Kohaku was like, I was going to get Shiki-sama to help me. And then Shiki was like, nah, see ya. It was fucked up. But really? But I don't really have any cooking skills, so I'm unsure if I can even help Kohaku-san. Not at all. It is something anyone can do. Come on, please lend me a hand. Kaka-san takes my hand and pulls me with her. Not really understanding what's going on, I end up helping Kaka-san. After calming down a bit, I realized that the kitchen is actually pretty small for a mansion so large. They probably had a much larger gallery, galley, where there were many people living in the mansion. It was just Akia, Hisori, Kaka-san, and I. They had this smaller kitchen prepared. Here, please wash your hands and use this apron. <laughs> I don't know whose taste this is, but a reflection of uh, she hands me an apron that says quiet, unsociable person. I forgot to drink water. Mm -mm. I'll start you off with a simple task, Shiki san. When it's all done, I have another task just for you. Kaku-san is in a good mood. First, I have to take the shells off of these shrimps. Wick, wick, wick. The sound of a knife lightly hitting the cutting board. <laughs> Kaku-san's humming fills the kitchen. She must be immersed in cooking because she doesn't say much. As for me, I'm actually enjoying peeling the shrimp and keep on peeling the skin. <laughs> you know, this really brings back memories. Before the incident, before I left the mansion, I played like this several times with kohaku -san and Akia. We were young then, and we didn't even think about how we were the opposite gender. We were just in a spacious mansion, and all we knew was the continuous fun of every day. We played around so much, we forget about all the things that bothered us before. Or maybe, maybe in order to forget the bothersome past, we tried to pass our days with as much fun as possible. Shiki-san, you really have uh, taken a liking to peeling those shrimps, haven't you? Huh? No, not really. Why do you ask? Because you look like you're having so much fun. You know, Hisui-chan, her eyebrows will always be so scrunched by, up by the time she gets done. Really? I'm surprised. She looked like the type that would do it without complaint. Yeah, for some reason, Hisui-chan is uh, poor at cooking. But she is really great at cleaning and arranging things. Is that so? I always felt that both of you and Hisue could do anything. If that was true, I would be very happy. But both Hisue-chan are, are merely normal, so we have our faults too. 
He used to be trying to sense the taste is a little strange. So even when she makes things that she thinks are delicious, for Akiyasama and I, it tastes really strange. I see, so that's why Hisue doesn't cook. Hisue sense the taste is a little odd. Kakusan, what's her fault, I wonder? Well, come to think of it, you and Hisue are different in your own ways. Kakusan, you're always cheerful while Hisue is staying in the mansion back then. Look at Kohaku face! Ah, damn, she doesn't change. She's too good. The poker face. Ah, uh, did I look that cheerful? I thought I was watching you all, though. Damn, bruh. I like the did this part in history row. But you know what Shiki did? He brushed it off. He ignored this sentence, this key word. I thought I was always watching you all, though. Did I look that cheerful? Man, Shiki, you're such an idiot. Yeah, I remember. You would always run around with us, but you would tell us to stop doing dangerous things and look out for us. Ah, I really do remember. Playing tag in the courtyard of the mansion. Trying as hard as we could to catch my old man carp in a pond. Hey, remember that time? The time where we left the mansion from the gate, right? <clears throat> we didn't know the way to get back, and you ended up calling the mansion. And when the mansion servants had to come pick us up, Yes, and after that, Makihisa-sama really did yell at you. Everyone was playing with you, but somehow you ended up being the only one. We did so many things, but in the end, you always saved Akiyasama and me from getting in trouble. She giggles as she speaks aloud nostalgically. What's this? Talking about old times. I really feel like I have returned now. That's right. I really don't have too many memories of this mansion, but talking about old times honestly makes me feel nostalgic. But... My memories aren't just happy ones. But I did treat Hisue poorly. That girl who was always in the corner of my heart. In the end, I was never able to have a true conversation with that girl by the window. That girl, she was always watching us from the window. It always it struck me. That lonely face looking down, I always thought it would be great if she could come and play. But still, before I left the mansion, she gave me that one parting gift. That's right. She was always shy even then, so I never knew what she was thinking. I always thought that if Hisui-chan was happy, it wouldn't matter what happened to me. Oh? Kaku-san, you really are a good Onesan. I'm feeling happy so I give an answer like that. Ah, all of a sudden, a short sound Kaku-san lift her hand. I can see she cut her finger with the kitchen knife. No, Kohaku-san, your finger! Huh? After I say that, she seems to have realized she cut her finger. Alright. This is where they showed us in history route too. But that's when I confirmed it. I don't like I was like, uh Kohaku's fucking crazy. She never changes her face. She's always smiling. Meanwhile, Hisue gave us multiple flavors of expressions, right? Hisue get sad. Hisue get angry. Hisue get happy. Hisue get shy. Hisue looks hurt, right? She looks hurt. When Akia was about to hit her, she looks very sad and hurt. Gohaku, on the other hand, she never stops smiling. Her, she got a good poker face, but it's too good. She got too good of a poker face. Ah, uh, that's true. That's true. Hey, Kohaku-san. I don't believe this. Even I could see that the cut is really deep. But Kohaku-san is still slow paced. How embarrassing. I am supposed to be a good chef. Ahaha. <laughs> Damn, the fucking laugh. That's, that's going to be like the yin deer laugh. Right? Kohaku-san gives her normal laugh. This is no laughing matter. We have to take care of it right away. It's fine. It isn't life threatening or anything. But doesn't it hurt? It's a cut. It's cut pretty bad. No, not at all. If I think it doesn't hurt, then it won't hurt. If I think this isn't my finger. Damn, that's some fucked up shit. And that's just a finger of some doll. Then I won't feel pain, right? Dang, if I think this is not my finger. It won't hurt. Because this is, isn't this is, isn't my finger. If I think this isn't my finger. 
It won't hurt because that's not my finger. Damn. What? If a smile, Kaku-san says something pretty outlandish. Well, I'm sure if you think that way, it won't hurt as much, but you can't get rid of it all. Look, let's just get it taken care of. I'm a little weak when it comes to blood, so if you have an anemic fit right here, it'll be your fault, Kaku-san. I see then. I should take care of it right away. Go ahead and shake your sign. Excuse me for a moment. The whole time, her smile never cracks. And giving me a bow with her head, she leaves the kitchen. Damn, Shiki didn't get suspicious. I would have got suspicious. Be like, what the fuck? Why are you still smiling? What do you say about your finger not being your finger? Wait a minute. That's what I would have said. Oh, this is the party. The welcome home party for Chicky. The drinking continues. I don't know what how this happened, but it looks like the Tono Shiki welcome party had just turned into a drinking party. Akia might be used to drinking. As she gulps down her glass as if she's drinking water. <laughs> Gaku-san slowly drinks with Akia while we're filling Akia a cup. Seeing that their faces still look normal, I'm guessing they don't show drunkenness on their faces. Incidentally, Hisui sits on the couch dizzily after drinking just one sip. Akia really has quite a lot of tolerance. Looking at the smiling Akia and Gaku-san, I gulped down my glass. It's just water, as I only drank a mouthful of alcohol during the toast. I take a bite of the smoked salmon on the table. It is exquisite. In the Tona house, even the snacks are first class. Mmm. Even though there might be a lot of problems, it's a pretty enjoyable right now. To be blunt, Akia and Kaku-san conversation is outright boring. It's as if they're just discussing how the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Despite that, it all seems rather charming seeing them laughing at these kind of conversations. <laughs> yeah, look at look at look at his way. <laughs> Damn, look at Hisue go. He's trying to drink her fill. On the other hand, Hisue is holding the glass. She's used to doing the toast and gaze vacantly. Whenever I looked away from Hisue, the glass becomes a little more empty. Then she's taking the baby sips. She seems to be enjoying herself too. I sneak another bite of food. You know, honestly, I think taking baby sips of alcohol, I think that'll get you more drunk, maybe. I don't know. I always feel like, I don't know. I feel like you have to drink it all. Like in one shot, but then you might die. Never mind. don't listen to me. I sneak another bite of food. I'm pretty weak against alcohol, so I prefer to eat the finger food instead. And what happened? Akia stands up and walks over to me. Nissan, you only been eating. You aren't going to drink any? Akia looks at me, a little dissatisfied. <laughs> now look, I don't care if you get drunk, but you shouldn't try to make others drink at your pace. I'm not used to drinking a lot, so if you want to drink with someone, Kohaku-san can. I tried to point over to Kohaku-san, but she isn't there. It seemed like she wants to get more alcohol from the kitchen. But excuse me, I'm not the slightest bit drunk. Raising her glass with one hand, Akia leans forward. I see. Since Kaka-san isn't here, I guess she's messing with me since she got no one to talk to. Kohaku doesn't have anything to do with this. We're talking about why you are not drinking. Well, I have been drinking. That's a lie. I haven't had a chance to pour you anything. I was drinking so that you could relax, but all you have been doing is munching away at the food Kohaku made. You haven't even had one glass, right? Kohaka, uh, not Kohaka. Akia pouts. Is it just me or is her step a little unsteady? Akia, uh, I just have to ask, are you drunk? Don't be ridiculous. I'm not drunk at all. You'll be dead drunk long before I will. You are dead drunk. Hurry up and finish your glass. <laughs> oh fuck, okay. I will listen to whatever you have to say when you're done. She points commandingly at my glass. Except her finger is wobbling a little over. 
Akia, I said this before, but you really are drunk. Sheesh! You really are persistent. I told you, I am not drunk. Akia yells and Rob was back. Her voice causes her to get dizzy. So what part of that isn't being drunk? Oh well, have a seat. We can chat a bit, I suppose. I pat the sofa next to me. Uh, yes, I was sick. <laughs> Akia sits down on the sofa. I don't know where all her boziness has appeared to, but she just meekly sits down. For some reason, I suddenly don't feel comfortable. Mm, Resign, I picked up my glass. I take a light gulp. The unfamiliar Akka burns my throat. It doesn't taste good at all. I feel the ground dip beneath me, as if I'm feeling dizzy from my anemia. But I can't say that this feels bad either. I might as well just finish it all, so I'm down the rest of it. I'm surprised. You may have said differently before, but you should since you like drinking, Nissan. What do you mean? I'm not a big drinker or anything. It doesn't look like it. You were drinking that rather happily. Akiya leans over and takes a bottle from the table. <laughs> I'll water it down, but do you have any preferences? I can poison me some whiskey if I ask you. Dead yeah, bird. Common sense demands that I stop her. But she seems so happy I throw aside any thoughts of common sense. Please water it down. Otherwise, I won't be able to drink it. As you say. Well, then let's start, shall we? Akiya happily fills my glass. Man, I don't even drink this much when I'm with Adahiko. I lean back on the sofa. Damn, Shiki, you are a delinquent. What the hell are you doing drinking with Adahiko? I down the glass with my neck tilted so far back that I can't see the ceiling. I drink what Akiya poisoned me slowly without letting my mouth go from the glass. Phew. Well, are you satisfied, princess? I place the empty glass on the table. <laughs> That's the way to do it. I had to take points off uh, for not drinking it fast, but it's still a passing grade. You're pretty strict. That was my new record, you know. You told me to drink it, so I pushed myself. Really? This is pretty rare you keep me company like this, Nissan. She chuckles. Pouring herself another glass, she downs it. My heart beats loudly at the sight of her face. She looks so mature when she's drinking. She closes her eyes and tilts her head back. Seeing her white throat voluptuously gulp down to alcohol, I forget about being drunk. Uh... Akiya okay, lets out a deep uh, breath. The glass is empty. She says under her breath something to the effect that it is delicious. Beam. What is it, Nissan? Is there something on my face? Uh, nothing. It's nothing. Without thinking, I pick up my glass. Another one? This time, we'll have something a little bit stronger. Akiya okay, fills up the glass again. I didn't really want another glass, but... I suppose it won't hurt. Mm. Trying to imitate Akia, I drink it all in one gulp. It wasn't that much alcohol, but I shouldn't have drank it that fast. My head starts to spin and I fall back on the sofa. I uh, see, swapping so drink it fast, man. Nissan, are you, are you all right? Uh, I'm fine. I just got a little dizzy, but I'm not drunk. I think I rest for a little bit. You go on ahead and have fun. Lean back on the sofa, I stare aimlessly at the ceiling. Even though I'm feeling completely drained, I feel incredibly good. I'm sorry, I forced you to drink too much. I could voice sounds very sad. No, maybe it's a little much, but it feels good. I drank it because you drank it so deliciously. I guess the result's alright though. So, go ahead and keep drinking. Once I settle down, I'll join you again. Okay. If you say so, I'll wait until you're done. I hear the sound of something pouring. As expected, she pours another glass and drink it. <laughs> That's odd. This isn't anything much, but it's so incredibly relaxed here. Alright. Taking a breath, I get up on the sofa. Nissan, are you feeling better? I'm fine. I'll keep you company a little bit more. I give her my glass. Smiling, she pours me another drink. That's so sweet. I hope they keep this in the remake. I know they're not of a legal age of drinking, but 
In context, Shiki is a delinquent. Akia is an unjoyed someone. She can do whatever she wants, man. She paid the bills. And this time, I decided to drink at my own pace. Time passes by. Isoe has fallen asleep on the sofa. Gaku-san never did come back from the kitchen. Only, the only ones still moving about are me and Akia. I'm pretty drunk, so I wouldn't necessarily call myself moving about. But still, I want to keep Akia company until Kohaku-san returns. <laughs> Nissan, you are very kind today. I guess that's something in a small voice. Huh? Kind? Me? Yes. Normally, you are a very cold person. I think kind of like this is very rare, isn't it? Really? I don't really know, but maybe I am cold. Oh, Nissan, you don't understand yourself very well. You are a very kind person, but at the same time, you are very cold. Because you make no distinction between people. You don't have anyone that you like the most, no matter if you hate them or like them. Nissan, you like and forgive everyone. But that is very cruel to the people you want to be closest to. You. For you, everyone is the same. Me, Kohaku, Hisuei, we are all the same for you. No, it's not like that. Yeah, I guess it's like that. That's because I can't choose. How do I choose between you, Kohaku, and Hisuei? That's too hard. That isn't kindness. Like an old dog that knows his time of death is near. You simply don't want to leave anything behind. You were like that back then. But now, how do you say it? You seem very dangerous. And it makes me uneasy. Downcast, Akia continues to speak, almost as if she was thinking aloud. Her glass is empty. She doesn't feel it, and her quiet voice echoes in the air. Hey. I would just thought that you were maybe inconsiderate and very lonely. I was just thinking something stupid like that. There isn't anyone you hold dearest in your heart. Maybe you lost that person a long time ago. Back then, I thought if you were just like me, that would be fine. At least there wasn't anyone you liked the most, so that was good enough. But now it is. Thank you for waiting! More food and drink! It was small when Hakusan returns. You think she was waiting? Like on cue? I think she was waiting on cue, dude. I think she was ready this entire time, but she was waiting for something. I don't know. I can't, I can't tell with Kohaku. Uh -huh. Akia san. <laughs> I like that face from Akia. That's one of my favorite faces. She looks so. What's that word? She looks. I don't know what's that word. But she looked kind, right? Kinder. Compared to the other faces. Akia suddenly swallows her word and with a sigh pours herself more to drink. Hey, Nissan, please drink some more as well. It's just me drinking now. Taking the bar that Kahaku-san brought, she pour oh god, she poured some more drink into my glass. No, I had enough. I had twice as much as normal, so please let me pass on this one. If I do drink more, I really end up in bad shape. What are you saying? You haven't even had a bottle yet. It's way too early to say you had enough. You say you drink with me, right? Oh god, come on, she says. Uh, hold on, uh, and holds out my glass. But I really am at my limit. Now, now, Akiya-sama. You do have to realize that Shiki-sama does not have the same tolerance as you do, Akiya-sama. Shiki-san, you should say no or you'll be in trouble. Akiya-sama doesn't get drunk no matter how much she drinks. So if you keep drinking with her until she's happy, you end up drinking until dawn. Damn, she can't get drunk. That's probably a side effect, right, from being a demon shit. Wait a minute, Kohaku. Make me sound like I'm some sort of alcoholic. Oh wait, maybe she can get drunk though. She did say all those weird shit. I mean, not weird shit, but the sad shit. So maybe she's drunk a little bit. Maybe she just have a really high tolerance. Angrily, Akia takes another drink. Even though she drank a lot, it seems that it seems like that's her first class. No matter what Akia says, Kohaku seems to be right. Sorry, Akia. I really have to stop now. You know my doctor says I shouldn't drink too much, right? Bro, you shouldn't drink at all. You're not even at the age yet. What do you mean your doctor says that? 
But he's bullshitting. He's 100% bullshitting. I get to send into an apologetic silence. That is true. Don't look so sad. I can still keep you company until you're done drinking. How's that? She nods but doesn't quite look satisfied. Well then, I'll pour you drinks, Akiya-sama. See, Shikisan is still here. So isn't everything okay, Akiya-sama? I guess certainly having Nissan keeps me company is rare enough. I won't let it go this time. Oh! Akiya holds out her glass to Kohaku-san. Smiling, Kohaku-san serves Akiya another drink. He starts to sip it slowly. Now what? It has gotten pretty late. He still woke up eventually and we talk about unimportant things. It's about the fond of alcohol, but I don't remember what we talked about at all. Just meaningless warm conversation. Because I wasn't used to this kind of stuff, I settled into an insecure comfort, like hanging from a soaking thread. It's probably because of that. On one hand, I thought it would be nice to, for this to continue, but on the other hand, I wanted a little time to myself. All of a sudden, Nissan. Akia, with full eyes of anxiety, looks up at me. What is it? Are you feeling okay, Akia? No, that's not it. I just got uneasy all of a sudden. Hey, Nissan, you won't go away again, will you? No. I don't know what will happen in the future, but I decided to stay here for now. At least until I finish school. And until it seems that Akia can manage by herself. But that would imply that I would leave sometime. Stop, I don't want to hear those words. This is your house, so no matter what happened, it is best for you to live here, right? After saying this, she downs her glass. An amazing sight. As I drinking down her uneasiness, she empties her glass. Gulp, gulp. Her cheeks are faintly flushed, showing that she has a buzz. <laughs> Akia sighs. Why do you always make me feel so uneasy, Nissan? She must be drunk, and she stares at me blankly. Seeing that, my heart starts to beat faster for no reason. Are you listening? As long as you are here, I am fine, but you always, always... Her eyes look straight ahead. Her cheeks are red, her eyes are glazed. This all seems very erotic. Maybe it's because I'm drunk as well. She's my, uh, Imoto-san, so why? Aki, huh? Nissan, I feel strange. Oh, God! She speaks aimlessly, as if she was someone else. This keeps up, I... Akiya-sama, your glass is empty. I'll pour you some more, okay? Uh, yeah, thanks, Kohaku. Kohaku-san pours her another drink, which she downs promptly. And then, all of a sudden, Akiya looks very serious. Akiya? That's odd. I seem to be drunk. What? She, ma she massages her temple with her fingers. Seems to be drunk. You've been drunk for quite a while. What are you saying? I'm drunk, so of course I won't make sense. She places her glass on the table quickly. That's strange. I just got started. Saying that, she collapses towards me. Hey, Akia! What are you? This is pretty obvious, though. Hey! There is no response. Her breathing tells me that she is happily asleep. Huh? This is rare indeed. Do you think you think Kohaku you think Kohaku drugged her? I think Kohaku drugged her. Huh? This is rare indeed. I have not seen Akia drunk in years. Kohaku-san smiles immediately. Kohaku-san, what do you mean? Well, Akiya-sama does not usually get drunk, but when she drinks over a certain limit, I guess all the alcohol hits her and she falls asleep. So for Akiya-sama, being drunk is the same as going to sleep. I don't know if that's a good or bad, but if Akiya-sama got drunk like most people, wouldn't that be scary? Shikisan, could you imagine a rampaging Akiya-sama? Kohaku-san paints a very frightening mental image. Dude, I think Kohaku Rufi heard. Dude, what the fuck? Deciding not to answer, I look at Akia's sleeping face. Akia is sleeping contently. She's leaning with her whole body up against mine. 
Even her breathing and body warmth. I remember that strange feeling I felt before. She must have been completely drunk because she seemed like a totally different person. I can deny I'm utterly flustered. Having her sleep so contently gets me puts me in the daze. Without a doubt, she is very beautiful. I can't believe she was my immortal son when I met her after eight years. I wonder if he remembers a little bit. Doesn't that imply that he was Akia wasn't his emoto for like you know since the start of life? He said after I met her. No, he didn't say that. He said when I met her after eight years. I feel like he he kind of remembers, but he don't at the same time. But that doesn't mean anything. All I can think is that looking at her wrestling up against me is a good thing. Without a doubt, she is my emoto son. One of the reasons I came back to the mansion was to protect Akia. Shikisama, if Akia is someone sleep like that, I believe she might catch a cold. Uh, uh, that's right. It is October, so we shouldn't let our guard down. I will take Akia Sama up to her room. Israel hoists Akia over her shoulders and exits the room. No one left on me and Kohaku san. Well, if Akia Sama is asleep, then we should end this party. I will take care of tidying things up, so please return to your room, Shikisan. I nod. I really do want to help, but I'm a little too drunk for that. If I helped her in this condition, I'll probably just get in the way. Uh, sorry, kohaku -san. Please take care of things. Just leave it to me, please. Good night, Shikisan. Woo. Alright, so this is different from Akia, and this is different from Hisui. We're going to the courtyard. I go out to the courtyard to clear my head of, the sum, uh, of some of the alcohol. The breeze is a little cool, so it feels good against my hot skin. This is bad. I really did drink too much. All that drinking gave me a headache, and I start to feel a little dizzy. I probably had some nightmares tonight. Well, that is just something I have to face after drinking. I guess seem really happy tonight. One or two nightmares is a small price for to pay for that. Sitting down on a chair, I take a deep breath. Hmm? The night breeze blows against my skin. There's nothing but silence. All the other houses are far from the Tono Mansion. Doing this, I feel like I'm in a mansion in the middle of the woods. I don't always forget that I am a normal student. Empty, weak atmosphere. A soundless scenery, a stagnation. A small fragment of memory about a garden. There's no one there. No father to yell at us, no one to tie us down and lock us away, or even that person who curses Tonoshiki. A long time ago, it all wore away, declining to something worthless. Thinking about those rambling ideas, my eyelids start to droop more and more. Shiki-san, if you sleep there, you'll catch a cold. And the voice jars me from my sleepiness. Oh, Kaka! It was a song. Damn, bruh. You know what? This might be the heat of the moment. I'm sorry, he's away. You may have to move aside. My heart. I only love Kohaku. Because I I don't know. I, it might be like 90% pity. And 10% I really do like her. But I can say for sure right now, I really I really like Kohaku the most. For now. I'm sorry, Shikisan. I guess it would have been better if you didn't drink anything tonight. Gaku-san says this with her usual smile, looking at me. It seems like Gaku-san must have guessed I came here to say cool off. I guess I got a little carried away. Not thinking about your health, I forced you to do too much. It was very tough, wasn't it? Gaku-san apologetically keeps her distance. What is this? It doesn't seem like the normal cherry Gaku-san. It was my decision to drink, so she shouldn't feel bad about it. Jeez, this isn't like you at all, kohaku -san. I look at kohaku -san, but she is still looking apologetic, so I sleepily gaze into the forest. It wasn't tough at all. I can't was so happy, and it was fun. kohaku -san, you were just thinking about it too much. Staring blankly into the forest, I tried to make my voice sound as gentle as possible. A brief silence ensues. Suddenly, like a rabbit poking his head out of the bush, Kaku-san comes into view. All 
Oh shit. Damn, bruh. Goku! I think that smile is real. I think that's a real smile. Gohaku san? Ah, so you are awake, Shiki san. You got so quiet all of a sudden. I thought you fell asleep. She says this, scolding me. It sounds like she wants to tell me that I shouldn't sleep here. I'm fine, Gohaku san. I'm awake, so don't worry. I'll go back to my room once I'm done cooling off, so you can go back inside. Mmm, I refuse. I want to cool off as well, so I will keep you company until you are done. Every usual smile, Kohaku san looks longingly at the fallen leaf in the forest. Well, if you feel like it, then that's fine, Kohaku san. Kohaku san doesn't answer. She walks over the leaves, which crinkle as she takes each step. Silence ensues again. Thanks, Kohaku san. It was really fun today. I really do mean it. What do you mean? Today wasn't something you should thank us for. Maybe. But it was really fun. Come to think of it, it was the first time we did something like that. And I finally felt like part of the family. It isn't like we didn't do things like that when I stayed at the Animas. It's just that when I lived there, I didn't ever want to be a bother. And I couldn't concentrate on having fun like today. Family. Touching her head to the side, she asked in a soft voice. For a brief instant, it looked like kohaku san removed her usual mask. Oh, I didn't even see it. Did she switch her facial expression? I don't think she switched her facial expression because this is CG, right? So she probably didn't. It's returned to her usual self. But Shiki-san, as long as you stay at the mansion, you won't ever have the family you are dreaming about. Won't? Oh shit! What the fuck? All your relatives shun you, and you're the only, and your only ally is Akiya-san. Oh, that means your life here will be very painful. What she says is correct. Eight years ago, I was treated badly enough to get me out of this house. So it's natural that they still think badly of me. Well, I'm prepared for that, but it doesn't really matter. I can't put up with it for eight years. I'm her Onisan. So I should be able to put up with it easily. Those eight years. Since she was little, I can't have to endure a very strict upbringing. Compared to that, my relative disliking me. Really isn't that much. I see. I guess I'm really lucky having a Nissan that thinks so much of her. I don't know. I don't think I'm a good Nissan to Akia. Still smiling, she continues to giggle. Seeing her laugh so much makes me feel a little embarrassed. But that's strange. Thinking only of Akia sama and not thinking of yourself like that. Huh? You too have lead a bad life. Being this inherited in a certain way, there had to be some hard times for you too. And when you finally start to really get along with the Ima family, you came back here. You were made to leave a normal family that suited you the most, due to a mere whim of the Tona house. Yeah, that's true. Oh, shit. I got this. I got a second water. You know, Gohaku did hate Akiha, but a long time ago. She didn't realize it, but no, she did realize it. She realized she didn't hate anybody anymore as she grew up. But when she was a kid, she hated Akiha. She hated Akiha. She hated capital letter Shiki. She hated Makihista. She hated every Tono family. And that's why she created the plan to kill everybody, to kill the entire Tona family. One of the main reasons she hate Akia is because Akia, Shiki died, the main character Shiki, he died protecting Akia. And when she saw that, she hated Akia. So I wonder if she felt a little bit angry too, when Akia decided to bring Shiki back to the Tono house, right? I can imagine she felt a little bit anger, but not too much. I don't even know how to respond. That morning, three days ago, I remember the face of Keiko-san standing in the doorway as we parted. Damn, bro, she was crying. I didn't want to see that always steadfast person smile so soundly. Like Kaku-san said, 
and left a big part of me behind that was so attached to them when I left. See, Shiki-san, don't tell me you never forget, uh, you never thought of that. No, that's something I shouldn't think about. Gohaku-san, why are you? I want to ask her why she's bringing all this up now. I want Gohaku-san, Akiya, and Hiso to think that I came back here because I wanted to. Shiki-san, I hear a voice. I can't ignore her voice, so I look up. Damn, she's not smiling, no. She's not smiling no more, bro. You know it too. We would have been happiest thing with the Anima family. That, but why is she, why? Why do you come back to the mansion now when there's only unhappiness waiting for you here? Excuse me. Why is she saying that? Damn, dude, with a crying face. Yeah, why is she saying that? I thought her plan was to bring Shiki back, too. I know she planned everything. But you think she didn't plan on Shiki coming back? You think she was planning on killing the entire Tono family? It was Shiki coming back. I don't know. I don't remember what she said in Hisui Rao. The Hisui ending. Maybe she didn't plan that. I can't answer. I just stare at Kwaku-san, as if I was in some sort of trance. You're mean, asking me to talk about such difficult things. I am sorry. I guess I must be drunk as well. Seeing such things, there must be something wrong with me. She is smiling. Smiling like that, it makes me seem uh, like she didn't even ask me something so serious. Kwaku-san, about that subject earlier, is it natural for me to come back here to my own home? I couldn't leave Akia all alone, and I couldn't burn the Animas forever. So, that is your reason for coming back? Gohaku-san seems like she's understand. But that is a lie. And there's another reason. Something more important than Akia. Shiki-san? What is it? Ah, well, it's different, Gohaku-san. You see? Wait, what? Oh! That's right! Remember? The promise we made to that girl eight years ago before we left to the Animas. And that girl in the mansion always staring down at us. For the first time in her life, she ran. She ran towards the boy that she never talked to, that she always watched through that window and made a promise with him. The first time she talked to him, she made a promise. We turned this white ribbon. That's the promise, bro! That's why Shiki came back. There's another reason. He wanted to return the ribbon. Oh, it's different, Kohaku-san. Really, there is another important reason. Really? Does that mean it is a secret? I don't know. It isn't that it's a secret, but it's an important memory I have and I don't want to talk about. It. I borrowed something when I left here, so I came back to return it. Oh, you think her face... I hope her facial expression changed. Oh, you think that's a, uh, you think she feels happy? I can't tell, bro. Like I said, Kohaku has a really good poker face. So it's hard to tell she's faking it. Well, that's a genuine smile. That doesn't look genuine, does it? I think she's surprised. I think she's shocked. But it seems like Hisui doesn't remember it, though. I get up in the chair. I cool down, so I'm going back to my room. Raising a hand, I exit the courtyard. No, that's genuine, bruh! She was shocked! Damn, bruh! She wasn't expecting this. Damn. Kaka-san just looks at me dumbstruck. Uh. I collapse on the bed. It's probably the fall of the alcohol, as I start to feel very sleepy. It's probably because I said those words to Kaka-san. I start to think about the promise I made eight years ago. You can never come back to this mansion ever again. I still remember the time when my father said those words to me and my feeling as I left my room. That time when I realized that I would be all alone, just like I was before I met Sensei. Not being able to keep my promise with Sensei, I guess I become empty inside. That time, the girl I spoke with only once. That was my only saving grace. 
I don't know what kind of magic was in those words. Give it back, okay? Just those words. But to me, those words meant so much back then. I always thought those words were important. Well, it seems that Hisue forgot she ever said them to me. Because she never said it, you fuck. Damn. I guess he can't tell. Because they switched roles. They keep picturing the depressing girl as Hisue. And the Genki girl is Kohaku. Even though Kohaku slip up. She slip up like one time. When she cut her finger. She said that I was always watching you guys. I, I don't remember being cheerful at all. I was just watching through the window. Shiki didn't pick that up. Fuck you Shiki. He should have picked that up. I guess he was too busy. Reminiscing the past. He wasn't listening to Kohaku. Oh well. It can't be hell. Just like this. It can't be hell. It's too late. He didn't pick that up. Which is a promise we made as children. It is a shame, but it really can't be helped. Eight years ago is a long time. Actually remembering a promise from your childhood is stranger than forgetting it, I suppose. Well, I should sleep. Taking a deep breath, I close my eyes. I sink into a deep sleep. What now? Oh shit. I feel the heat in my body wakes. Roasting. My throat is burning. My blood is evaporating. The roasting must be leaving scars all over. Roasting. I can't think clearly. I feel the dirty presence of someone else in my room. What? Burning. I decide to leave my room. What? What the fuck? What the fuck? The clock says it's past midnight. The burning won't stop. What the hell is going on with Shiki? Confusion. Thump thump. My heart pounds. Sexual excitement. The whole world pulsates in unison. Delusion. Burning. Crimson. Fuel two. Exploding. Multiplying. The black wings of insect. It's, it's as if my eyes, blood of mad desires, have a pulse. Type, different death. I enter the darkness. My exploding heart scourges me forward, more and more. Thump, 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 thump. He's not having a dream. You saw that? He exited the house. This is actually Shiki. The beating that makes my existence pale in comparison. My heart doubles, burning is my single body with their fierce pulsation. Now, time to fulfill her wish. Her wish? What the fuck? And then, there were the corpses of strangers in front of me. One, two, three people. I count on loud. I point out each one with my finger. Red fingers. No. Both of my hands seem painted red. Of course, there isn't any paint anywhere around me. The only thing here is a flay spaghetti with meat sauce, of course, of three bodies. On the ground is my knife engraved with Nanatsu Yoru. Yo, is this Nania? What the fuck? They never mentioned that in any of the routes, right? They mention it like early on the routes when he read his knife, when uh, Kohaku gave him the knife. You know, that is weird too. I wonder why Kohaku gave him that knife. I hope they explained it. They didn't, they, they explained everything technically in his way route. He's way ending. Kohaku motive. But they never explained her actions. They, they did. But they never deeply explain her actions, right? Why did Kohaku give Shiki the knife? Did Kohaku ever plan on Shiki coming back? It doesn't seem like it. But then why did she have the knife this entire time? This means it doesn't even require thought. I did this. I picked up my knife. I can't believe it, but what's done is done. Now that I realize that my once burning body has cooled now. Damn, my heart hurts. I have heartburn. I'm just fat, don't worry. Now that I'm done, I should go back to the mansion. Someone's coming. Someone comes down the pathway. Great. This place is already overflowing with spaghetti. And now I have to make it some more meat sauce on top of that. The footsteps approaches. The dark shadow becomes a little clearer. I grip my knife. The shadow enters the alley. King. The sound of metal clashing. I can't believe it. Without any indication at all, the shadow totally intercepted my attack. The enemy also uses a knife. Our attack cancel each other. Fatal strikes to the throat. 
That's surprising. Our voices overlap in the darkness. We both put away our knives at the same time. I didn't expect to see my kind here after coming back. It's my first time seeing a killer. He laughed as to say this. This is Roa. A pure laugh without any bad intentions. It's like the laugh of a boxer that finally cut weight and stepped into the ring to face his greatest lifetime rival. Probably after the same smile on my face. <laughs> he snores as he turns around. We walk out to the main street. This looks like a good spot. It's a bit odd for a two grown men to be standing about, isn't it? What the fuck? I sit down on the sidewalk. As he just thought of something, he's walking to the vending machine. Hey, give me some money. What the fuck? What the fuck? What? Who is this man? This is not Roar. He's too calm. I know this has to be Nanya. This can't be Shiki. This is 100% Nanya. And the people he killed are probably vampires, right? Because remember, the Nanya bloodline is to kill anything that's not human. That's their instinct. So Nanya probably woke up, killed all the vampires, and he was about to go back to sleep. But then he met this man. I'm betting this man. I don't know who he is. This can't be Robert, bruh. Hey, give me some money. I don't have any. I'm not exactly rich right now, but I give him the biggest coin I have. Always wanted to try this. He says it's happily and buys two cans of coffee. Catch! Alright! I get to change a, <laughs> the can of coffee? He sits by my side and takes a drink out of the can. For some reason, I think this is all I've been doing all day. Yuck! I don't think uh, cigarettes and coffee are a great match. Whoa, cigarettes? Who's this man? What the fuck? I don't know anybody that's smoking this game. Cigarettes? Who is that? Cigarettes. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember anybody smoking. The only person that kind of smoke is Neko Ark. Not Neko Ark, my bad. Neko Chaos. But he's a joke character. For Nero. Who is this man? I wonder why adults even drink these things. They're training their endurance. Being a adult is pretty hard work. Ah, I see. You're pretty smart. Oh, yeah, what? <laughs> you check us and delighted. I take a drink as well. I can't help but agree with him. This must be awfully suicidal when to drink something that tastes like poison. Well, anyway, you're a pretty awful guy. How can you just suddenly strike at someone's throat like that? You're one to talk. You were trying to kill me too. Is that so? Well, what's done is done. We're both aligned so we can call it even. Well, he's right. We both tried to kill each other. So even if one of us died, we'd still be even. As a competition, that sounds right. Even though he keeps saying it's disgusting, he keeps happily drinking the coffee. Well, this isn't bad once you get used to it. This feels like a get-together of bad boys kicking out of society. He says so, killing his smile. Excuse me. Really? Well, you want to smoke? You look more like the bad boys that way. Nah, I pass. That, they numb the brain. If you want to remain pure, you shouldn't take any poison. So says the guy drinking coffee. What's with you? You're pretty nitpicky for a killer. Humans eat poison every day, so isn't this alright? Why aren't humans? This dude's a vampire. This has to be Roa. Maybe Shiki's gone in this chapter, right? Maybe Roa awakens? And this is Roa. Because remember, Roa is more calm than Shiki. Capital letter Shiki was like a... He violates people. And he eats people. He's a he's a cannibalism. Whatever it's called. Roa is actually classy. He's like 800 year old vampire. Of 800 years of knowledge. So he has class. It's probably Roa. It's probably not Shiki. Capital letter Shiki might be gone. You have some tolerance against it too, right? He laughs loudly. I feel the exact same way, so I take another sip. I speak with him for another hour. We ran about nothing as we watched cars go by. The most pointless thing was probably our special powers. My eyes that could see death. His body that dies with great difficulty. What? Now that's 100% Rora. 
Rola is hard to kill, so there has to be Rola. We begin to discussing uh, their principles. I see. Well, does that mean you can kill the five senses? He says such nonsense. I can't do that. I can't kill something so vague that needs an expression to be understood. Not at all. Look, if you want to kill sight, kill the sight. Kill the eyes. Hearing, kill the ears. I can do at least that much, but you're different. You can kill things without crushing them. The moment you see those lines, you can kill. Not the object, but its very meaning. That's why, something beyond the five senses. Like the sixth sense, spirit and emotion. You should be able to kill those things too. Huh? Well, he has a point. My eyes themselves are an aberration. Using logic to understand them is a mistake from the start. Then, can I kill that too? That apparition that I once saw? That I saw once in my childhood? What does that mean? The haunted things. Oh! Fuck the Tono family! He wanna kill the Tono family? That's cool. No, that's not cool! Don't kill Akia! Uh oh. Wait a minute. I forgot the only one that's still alive is Akia, technically. She's the last remaining Tono. I guess besides capital letter Shiki. But if this is Roa, then that means capital letter Shiki is technically dead. Because Roa took over. So that's Roa body now. But that seems hard. If I do that, I don't know how much longer I can stay sane. Yeah. It's like trying to calculate as a god using the mind of a human. You cripple yourself for sure. He says this as he walks towards the vending machine again. Hey! So look at the vending machine. <laughs> he holds his hand behind him and towards me. I toss him a coin, which he catches skillfully, and he used to buy another can of coffee. I then drinking this, he turns to me again. It really has been a long time since I talked to another person. That's really weird. That's strange. Were you stranded on an island somewhere? Huh? I'm still stranded on this island. It seems I'm out of alignment with society. They say someone who kills people for no reason is just crazy. That's really no one, no way someone like me, who's out of tune, could have conversation with someone in tune. Mm hmm. So we're out of tune? Yeah. It's not a matter who's off tune. Those out of tune with society are the one out of tune. Really? Maybe society is the one out of tune instead. What do you mean by that? Exactly what I said. Didn't you say that just now? It's like a majority rule. The views of the minority that aren't the same as the views of the majority are said to be unusable and rejected. But it doesn't matter who is right or wrong. If you don't fit in, you're left out, regardless of if you are right or wrong. The term out of tune doesn't follow universal rules. Heh, <laughs> so are you trying to say that killers like us aren't evil? Who knows? I don't know about good or evil, but if you think about it logically, we aren't the ones out of tune. Let's see. How about using boxers as an example? It doesn't have to be boxers, but it can be an easy example to understand. Boxers, their job is to punch people, but not just to punch people. They painfully cut weight, train every day to skillfully punch people, to effectively punch others, to efficiently defeat others. They diligently work on it every day, like sharpening a blade. What do you think of that? Huh? There are people like that. And? That, no, that's not. That's all. They just punch each other. They don't kill their opponents. Sure, they could die from accidents, but it isn't considered murder. Isn't that incredible? You mean it's okay to kill? No, no. You aren't supposed to kill, but you could. Isn't that a huge contradiction? Oh, shit. I, I get what you're saying. Isn't that all? Because a box of fists is considered a weapon, they're allowed to fight outside the ring. That's true. Their fist could be illegal. This is incredible. They know a box of fists is a weapon, so why is there such a profession in the first place? If it's a weapon that can kill, they should abolish it. Killing is wrong. Killing is wrong. But this world is full of tools to kill. Even the law allows it. But they say it's not alright to kill. This can be considered chaos. It's common sense is what it thought of as the good of the majority of people. Then we aren't out of tune. If there is anything out of tune, it's this world. All that said, I don't necessarily hate boxing. There are a lot of professions out there, 
but there aren't any other where you could be so stoic about your objective. You strengthen yourself by cutting yourself off from all temptation. Humans are interested in strength they can easily comprehend. That's why competitions will never go away. Of all these competitions, the one people like the most are where the contestants hurt each other. Admiration of the strong. The mindset that can only be drawn towards strength. There's probably a very healthy mind. A guy like him and I think only results. Our colors might be similar, but our shape should be completely different. Something you can concentrate on and forget yourself. That doesn't become an individual free will. Those that worship education, those who emulate themselves in art, those who advance themselves in business. If an individual could decide that, then this world would be pretty puzzled. That could be understood. But this puzzle is full of holes. Pieces are missing, and a lot of pieces don't fit. I see. You like to talk a lot, don't you? I had a friend like that once. Excuse me. How do I say this? Well, he didn't have anything, which is why he looked like he didn't want anything. To me, he seemed very isolated. Isolation is just another name for loneliness, right? That's why it bugged me. Hmm? Didn't want anything. What about you? Is there something you want? I don't know. I think I used to, but I can't remember now. What about you? Everyone wants something, but I haven't found anything worth dreaming for. A fire within me that caused me to lose my mind. Tonight was maybe my first time feeling that. Ha 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 That means you're a killer too. I don't know. I can't be sure yet. What about you? Is killing fun? Are you stupid? If it was fun, I'd be doing it non-stop. There isn't a reason. Once you start, you just get hooked. I see. I think I understand a little bit. In other words, it's not a matter of liking or disliking the murder. It's a matter of when he does kill someone, whether he can devote himself to the action. That's probably the difference between being in and out of the tune. Hey, did he ever take a part of a radio when you were a kid? Ray Dio. Dio. I never killed anyone like that. <laughs> what the fuck? Right, thanks for being a moron. <laughs> what the fuck? This is too fucking cool, dude. I love this. I hope they keep this in the remake. If they remake Kohakura, I'll keep this. This is this is great. To be honest, that was a joke. Anime objects and anime anime objects are completely different. Maybe people like us should be doctors instead. A doctor? I hate medicine. When you get shot, don't you feel yourself getting diluted? It's like you're becoming a puppet, right? Is that so? I have my own doctor, so I take medicine like it was nothing. Ah, it really was a lot of fun. He stands up, and with empty eyes, he looked down at me. Well, we don't need two of us in this time, right? Oh, we're gonna fucking kill each other! Two lions in a cage this small won't even be able to mark their own territory. He looked like he's going for his knife. An inorganic reek of murder. He really does want to fight to the death. You shouldn't. I say quite naturally. Why? Well, as a living creature, you're stronger than me, but if it's a fight to the death, I'm superior to you. He grinds his teeth. At the twitching smile, <laughs> he laughs extremely loudly. What? What is it? Was it that funny killer? <laughs> the man continues to laugh. Just when I thought I just have to leave him, he starts laughing and looks at me. You're right, you know. Saying that, he starts to walk away. I guess this is a good opportunity. Now that someone like you is here, I should probably leave town. I don't really intend to take your place. No, no, it's useless. You got hooked tonight, right? Then it'll be same tomorrow. You'll be able to endure even for a day. Well, I hope we won't meet again. Dude, who was that man? No! Show a sprite! Raising a hand, he disappears. Hearing that we wouldn't meet again, I got a little sad. At my feet, there were about 10 cans of coffee that he drank. In other words, he never paid me back for those. Damn, fucking got him. No, we never met him. Dude, I bet it's Roa. It has to be. No one's sophisticated in this game. There's no one sophisticated besides Roa. Roa's the only one with class and intelligence. Because he lived 800 years studying the art of immortality. Nero is kind of smart too, but Nero is not a people person. 
he wouldn't talk to anybody. It has to be Roa. And I don't know anyone else that have a knife as a weapon. I don't think Shiki, capital letter Shiki, would show up in this route. Because Roa took over his body and probably just dip. He, he left. He was like, all right, see ya. <laughs> see ya. I'm going to go over there. That means if Roa left the city, that means Shio Senpai is gone. And Ark is gone too. So now it's just he's away. Kohaku. And Akiha. And then they made a very dangerous statement too. Right? They made a very dangerous statement. And I'm kind of scared. For Akiha. Right? Well, it said uh, in my childhood, I want to kill the red vermilion hair or something like that. Right? That's the Tono family. And we all know, right, from reading all the routes, Shiki entire family, the Nania family, was killed by the Tono family. And the Tono family are mixed with demon blood. So their hair turned red when they fight, I guess. So that's probably uh, the Tono family. And the only person that's left with red hair is Akia. So he might, it might, for, it might foreshadow something with Akia. And I hope, I just want Akia to live, man. Fuck, dude. Seeing her die in the Hisui route, that made me really sad. I hope she lived in this one. And make it back to my room. It was almost dawn. I should have just forget everything and go to sleep. Dude. They're never going to show us that, man. All right. This is how we know if this is Roa. If capital letter Shiki never appears in this route, if Shio Senpai is gone from school, we never met Ak uh, Ark in Hisui, so let's not count Ark. So if Shio Senpai is gone, if we never met capital letter Shiki, then that means that was Roa, 100%. Let's see. All right. Pretty tired. It's a good stopping point. I don't know where to save. Let's save number 20. No. Yeah, let's save number 20. Fuck it. it. I think that's just hentai, right? No, that's a... Uh, that's his way ending. <sighs> Alright, fuck it. Let's save number 20. With that, we call it a day. We'll find out next time. If that was Rora. Like I said, if we don't see capital letters Shiki in the entire route, that was Rora. If we don't see... If, if uh, Shio Senpai suddenly disappears, that was Roa. I can't think of anybody else. There's nobody, right, that fits the bill. Who? That has to be Roa. But with that, I appreciate everyone that stopped by. That was a really good... I think that's probably my favorite start of a round. For Tsukihime. Because of that weird... It's because one, that has to be Nania. That wasn't like a random ass killer, aka either Roa or Shiki Nightmares. I think that was Nanya, 100%. Because they, they talk about his blade, right? Nanatsu, whatever. That was that was Nanya. That has to be Nanya. And he had a conversation with somebody. We don't know who that somebody is, but that person seemed cool too. He just took, <laughs> he took all Nanya money, right? Drank 10 can of coffee and dipped. And I'm like, all right, see ya, I'm moving away. I'm never coming back to this town. Fuck that. <laughs> All right. That's GG's on Sukihime. Appreciate it when I stop by. It's been cool. Thanks, man. Laters. Bye.